One thing I would like to happen soon is for people to talk about vaginas and vulvas and all things happening down here in a kinder manner. I feel like there's been a lot of disrespect from men and women when it comes to how we discuss things below. For example, I was talking to a friend who's a woman and she was thinking about getting an IUD. If you don't know what an IUD is, it's birth control. It can be copper or plastic. They put it in your cervix. It's shaped like a capital letter T. And whenever sperm comes around, it's like, seats taken. <laughs> And then you don't get pregnant. <laughs> so my friend was thinking about getting one and she goes, yeah, my doctor said that every so often I would have to put my fingers up there to make sure my IUD didn't move or fall out. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not putting my fingers up there. And I was like, what have you been doing your entire <laughs> life? <laughs> not putting your fingers up there? And she's not unique in this way of thinking. I've talked to many women, I mean women, like above 30 who have said things like, I've never seen my vagina. I've never put my hands inside myself. This cannot continue. <laughs> this has to stop. <laughs> Even when it comes to period stuff, I use a menstrual cup and have for the last 10 years. <laughs> not the same one. Uh, <laughs> You do have to change them. <laughs> if you don't know what a menstrual cup is, it's a silicone cup. You fold it, put it in, pops open, it catches all the blood, you dump the blood in the toilet, you wash the cup in the sink, and you put it back in. And I've described this process to other women, and sometimes I'll get the response of, ew, <laughs> you touch your own blood? Yeah, it's mine, so it's fine. <laughs> It might be weird if I was like, taking someone else's cup out. <laughs> or like shampooing with it. <laughs> or mixing it in a drink. <laughs> it's the real Bloody Mary. <laughs> but it's going in the toilet, it's fine. Also, if you've ever owned a dog or a baby or an old person, <laughs> you've touched way worse. <laughs> also, I wanna let you know that um, I'm currently wearing a cup right now. <laughs> Just to give you a little peek behind the beef curtain. <laughs> Isn't that fun? You just never know. You never know. You could be talking to somebody, looking them in the eye, and they could be holding. I'm like a molten lava cake right now. She's got a little surprise. But I like talking about this stuff because it doesn't have to be secretive or taboo or icky. It's so natural and normal. I just really want us to stop treating our parts as if it's a separate entity from our body. Just get in there. Get your hands in your pussies. Get those hands in those pussies. Grab yourself by your pussy. You're allowed to, it's yours. Men touch their dicks all the time. All the time. If you shake a man's hand, there's a chance he was just rearranging some thin skin shortly before that point. We should be like that. I'm not saying we should like root around in there and start shaking people's hands. But we should just check up on what's happening down there with as much frequency. I have friends who will let someone Pound that pussy. Destroy that pussy. Beat that pussy up. And they won't put a hand mirror down there to make sure it's still intact. It just got destroyed. You're not curious?
Also, if you're in the crowd and you're like, oh my God, she's talking about me, I hate this. I'm not judging you. I don't judge anyone for this mentality because we're raised this way. We're raised in a culture that demonizes women for even having bodies and makes us feel like our parts are only important in relation to how they make other people feel. And we get taught these things at a very young age. I remember when I was younger, when I was PT, pre-tits. <laughs> my mom told me, if your dad is in the house, you shouldn't run around without a shirt on because it would be disrespectful to him. And my mom's not weird for telling me that. She told me that because her mom told her that. And I've talked to many other women who've gotten the same kind of teaching that we need to cover up and shrink for the men in our household. But it's like, if you think there's someone there who could potentially sexualize a child, let alone their own child, you need to get that predator out of the house. <laughs> and to make you feel better, my dad didn't show any signs <laughs> of sexualizing me or finding me sexy, no matter how hard I tried. I was flirting my little ass off. <laughs> Got no bites. I also feel like we need to tell little girls it's okay to touch yourself and explore your body. <laughs> so we're not doing weird stuff later. <laughs> when I was younger, I was raised very Christian and I thought I was gonna go to hell if I touched myself down here. But I wanted to try, because I heard stories. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe if I don't do it, maybe if like an inanimate third party does it, <laughs> it'll be fine. So the first time I masturbated was with the handle of a lint roller. <laughs> it didn't feel great. It was lint free after. <laughs> and I had a friend, she washed it first. She used the filter of a fish tank because it vibrated and she at least knew it was supposed to do that. We need to tell little girls it's okay to put your hands down there so we're not doing scavenger hunts in our house. <laughs> trying to find things that fit. Anyone else want to share a household product they put inside of themselves? <laughs> I'm genuinely asking. Shout it out. A hairbrush? Yes, I love a multi-purpose tool. <laughs> it's not only for your locks, you can pretend it's a cock. <laughs> Electric, Electric toothbrush, classic, classic. You gotta fill those cavities. I love it. Was it? A spirograph pen? Now, what is a spirograph? It vibrates. It vibrates? Oh, good, good, good. Not one of those normal ass pins. Cause like, I'm not fucking around with Bic. <laughs> no, 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 no. This thing has to work. <laughs> I love it. Anyone else? Cucumber. A cucumber, yes. Toss that salad, bitch, yes. Did it come out a pickle? <laughs> this is a little acidy in there. <laughs> Anyone else? The end of a Oh, the end of a couch. I like that. I like that it's specifically the end of a couch. <laughs> She's like, it's the end of the couch, but my beginning. <laughs> the beginning of my journey. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much to everyone who shared. And for those who didn't, I know. I know. 
I love asking people about this stuff because it's so natural and normal and we don't talk about it that much. I feel like there's all this stuff in the media that encourages straight boys' sexual exploration. There's a whole movie franchise based on a boy fucking a pie. <laughs> I counted. There are eight American Pie movies. <laughs> eight. I want like a Spirograph pin short film or something. <laughs> Just something. Also, if you have experimented and put a household product inside of yourself, you're in good company. You have our friends. <laughs> and there's a whole group of people who are known to have done the same thing. And those people are witches. <laughs> Allegedly, the imagery that we see of a woman riding a broomstick comes from women being caught putting the hallucinogenic drug DMT on the end of a broom and masturbating with it. So they were flying high on a broom. They were geniuses. They were putting brooms in their hoo-ha or their blue hoo-ha. They were getting high while they were getting off. And men were like, kill them. <laughs> Why would you persecute a person like that? That's not a woman you burn, that's a woman you marry. <laughs> Clearly she has good ideas. That's someone you follow to the ends of the earth like, what other cool stuff are you doing in the woods? <laughs> I wanna see. <laughs> I really think a lot of that witch hunt hysteria was just men being upset that women were having fun without them. <laughs> all the men are like, oh, you don't need me to help you come? And all the women are like, I have a broom. I can sweep myself off my own feet. <laughs> if I could say anything in an effort to bring us together, whether you're conservative or whether you're liberal, any of that shit, man, like all I'm trying to suggest to bring us together is that if you look out at whatever's going on in society, the society, the culture that you are in, and you feel change coming, you're certain it's coming. No matter how you feel, that is gonna be a regularity. It's not gonna hurt you to learn something so that you can be a part of it. You understand? You don't even gotta believe in it, but you're gonna have to coexist with these exact same people. It's not gonna hurt you to understand their stuff better. Does that make sense? That's all I'm trying to get at, because when you don't know what you're talking about, it's fucking jarring. And I just need you to understand, stop being that person. We've all done it. Why are we continuously trying to do that again? I was in Kansas City a couple months ago. I flow in to do a show. I get off the plane. I order an Uber. I get this alert on my phone, this notification. It says, Frog will be here in five minutes to pick you up. And I'm like, Frog? <laughs> I'm looking at the picture. It's a picture of a woman, right? It says Frog. It's a, per it's a picture of a person I believe identifies as a woman. Let's be honest, right? But it's, it's Frog. It's what it says, I'm not reading it wrong. It's not, it's not a tough word. <laughs> Fraud. And I'm thinking about it, like I'm having this debate in my head and I'm going like, I mean, she ain't hurting anybody. You know, it's, it's a non-binary name. No one's getting hurt. If you want to be called frog, you're frog. I accept you, frog. I can't wait to meet you. Put my phone away. I go out, I wait for the car to show up. She pulls up. I open the car door, I, I lean inside. I go, hey, how you doing? She looks back and goes, ribbit. I went, nope, close the car door. <laughs> Too much progress in that car. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying she did something wrong. I'm saying I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready for the journey Frog was gonna take me on. <laughs> but had I done more research, who knows where we could have ended up. I don't have more story because I was ill-prepared. That's all I'm getting at. It's not gonna hurt you to learn. Some progressive things, they're the wildest shit you've ever seen, but they're kinda cool. I did a show in Denver once. One of my best friends lives around the corner from a club, right? We do a show, we come out, it's 11.30 at night. I'm watching him walk home to his house, right? He's gotta go around the corner. As soon as he gets to the end of the street, I shit you not, this is gonna sound made up. This is exactly what happened, right? As soon as he got to the end of the street, I saw seven teenagers, all on scooters, like bird scooters. They ride from around the corner, they ride up to him, and then they just started circling around him. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life. In real time, in nature, this is happening. They just rode up to him, 
I watched seven children kidnap my adult friend. And I had no idea how to advise him. He's like looking back at me like, ah! And I'm like, I think they got you, man. I think they just got you. I've seen Animal Planet. I know this isn't a good thing. I don't know where it leads, but I know you're bad. You know what they started doing? One of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life. They just started bullying him. Like verbally bullying a grown man. I'd never seen something like this in my life. They just started going, you're gay. You're gay. And can I just say side note, to see anyone riding a scooter going, you're gay. Just what are we, what? What am I looking at? Like I'm not against you, but come on, this is, huh? You're gay. <laughs> what? I'm seeing seven of them do it. And they just keep going, you're gay, you're gay. And do, what this dude said back, y'all, I'll never forget this the rest of my life. This might be the most progressive thing I have ever heard in my life. They go, you're gay. And he goes, that's your opinion. And I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Did anybody else know that was an option of things? <laughs> you could say back to you're gay, that's your opinion? What an insane way to win the argument. <laughs> Because he won, be clear. That was a victory, but like that? That'd be like if somebody called me a nigger and I just went, to each their own. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I saw. You know what I learned? Did you know that no one can insult you if they aren't convinced that you understand that was an insult? Did you know all you've ever had to do is say crazy shit back and no one could ever hurt you? Dude, it happened to me the other day. Some dude called me a jungle monkey. I was like, tomato, tomato. It's like, how do you attack that guy? You feel me? Some dude's like, you a little pussy boy. I'm like, that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> You can't get them, you know? Some dude's like, you can't read? I'm like, you're not my real dad. <laughs> Love it. I just don't think progress is such a bad thing when you start to understand it more. That's all I'm really getting at. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to sway you. Whatever you vote, you vote. That's what you do, right? I'm just saying, I don't think it's actually that bad a thing when you just have an open heart to it and you go like, oh shit, is that what's going on? One of the things I hate is like when we get labeled as a whole, like as a liberal, when people go like liberals, you know what I mean? Libtards, all that shit. And if I go, like, we're just gonna be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I hate it when we get lumped together as if we're not all individuals who have their own minds, who have their own string of logic, who have their own priorities. That irks me. You think all liberals agree? We don't. We bicker all the time. We don't have the same priorities. That's crazy to me. I'll give you one of mine. Look, I came from Florida and then moved to California. I thought I was liberal, and then I got there, and I was like, ooh, I'm liberal for Florida. It's a different thing. It is a different thing, you know? Here's my big one. I don't understand how drinking from plastic straws equals I hate turtles. It's too big a leap for me, man. There's just, there's too much in between there. I don't hate turtles, I'm just too black to care about this right now. I've got my own things going on, you know what I mean? That's all I'm getting at. No one's saying green lives don't matter, but black lives called it first, nigga, get in line. I, I've been here a while. And just to be clear, you ain't next in line, turtles. We still got women and gay people. The Amazon rainforest was on fire. You gonna be here a while, turtles. I just don't understand that notion. No one's saying we should care less about turtles. I'm saying we should care more about me. And I can't believe I gotta make that case sometime. Like, okay, let's say hypothetically, if Martin Luther King Jr. was still alive to this day, and he saw how gung-ho we were for saving sea turtles from plastic while racism still exists, don't you feel like he'd be like, you motherfuckers have gotta be kidding me? Like, <laughs> like on some level, that dude would be upset, right? That's all I'm saying, so we can sense it. I, I hate that I have to defend myself from these straw people. I don't know what else to call them. Like, I've been called out seven times for it. Seven, I'm counting. Seven times I've been in a bar, I'm sipping on a Sprite. Some woman walks up to me, she's always white, let's be honest. But she, she's always, it just is what it is. I'm not saying she's bad, but why is she always white? 
She comes up to me. She confronts me about it. She goes, did you really need a drink from that? I go, I'm sorry? She goes, did you really need a drink from a plastic straw? I don't even listen. I just take a knee. I'm like, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to stay on that. I just don't do it. She doesn't get to say that. Like, I understand she cares about turtles, but that's not your fight to bring to me. If a turtle came up and was like, you can't drink from a plastic straw, and then she was like, motherfucker, I'd be like, okay, I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong. Fuck. No. Shit. Fuck. But that's not what happens. That I just don't get it. It's not fair. You don't get to decide how I feel about turtles. You don't fucking know me. You don't know what I've done. I'll give you a crazy story. When I was a kid, I had to stay with a family member who was requested to stay anonymous in this story because I told him it was going in the special, and he was like, I need my job. <laughs> You'll stay anonymous, my guy. But he should be ashamed of himself. I stayed over his house for a summer, okay? He has a pool in the backyard. It's one morning, we wake up, we look in the backyard, there's a pool, excuse me, there's a pool, there's clearly a pool. There's a, uh, there's a turtle wandering around the pool, right? It's just a regular turtle, to be clear. Just a turtle. It's not hurting anybody, it's not like a big turtle, it's not a small, it's just a turtle. Just wandering around. You'd have thought this dude had just like stumbled upon like an actual home invasion. He's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Where, who the fuck does he think he is? I heard an adult man say that sentence about a turtle. Who the fuck does he think he is? Rip, about, about a turtle? He storms off to the phone. He calls up animal control. I shit you not. He goes, y'all need to get this fucking turtle out my yard or I'm going to shoot it. He started the conversation with that. Not who he is, not where he's located. None of that information was important. They need to know if they don't get this fucking turtle out his yard, he's going to shoot it. I hear the woman on the other side of the line. By the way, I'm seven. I'm watching this like adults are crazy. <laughs> I hear the woman on the other line. You know what she does? I shit you not, I can hear it. It's so funny. She just goes, good luck to you, sir. Hangs up the phone. I was like, oh! Oh, she called his bluff! I watched, I swear to God, I watched an adult man have a fucking meltdown. Actually. I knew what a meltdown was when I was seven because I saw him go, what, yeah, what the fuck? I gotta shoot this turtle. I saw his brain. Like, come to that conclusion in real time. Oh, 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 I gotta shoot this turtle. <laughs> and just to be clear, it ain't a special turtle. Just a fight, no ninja turtle, just a Danny DeVito looking turtle. The thing you're thinking of, all right? <laughs> this dude storms off to his bedroom. He takes a couple seconds, comes back, he's got a fucking handgun. He's got an actual hand, it's big, big gun. He's walking straight for the back door. And I stepped in his way. I was like, hey. <laughs> you can't shoot a turtle. Sentence I never thought I'd have to say in my life. <laughs> can't shoot a turtle. This dude goes. You're right. You shoot the turtle. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Could you imagine? It's time to be a man. That's... I get in his way. I say, you can't shoot a turtle. And he goes. All right. He goes back to his room. Puts his gun away. You understand what I'm saying? The fuck have you done for turtles? <laughs> I earned my fucking straw. <laughs> if you don't like it, you can suck my dick. Thank you guys so much, man. Thank you guys.
When you debate your life, when you go back and forth in your life, you don't know if you're gonna live or die. You realize a lot of things, great things that happen in your life and terrible things that happen in your life. And one thing that stood out to me is my parents never told me they loved me till I was 29 years old. And it really messed with me in the hospital, right? So before I get into that story, I gotta tell you about my parents. If you haven't seen my last special, my dad is black, born and raised in Louisiana, has a PhD in nuclear physics and served our country in the army, people. Right. Now, in the last special, he was 75, now he's 78, and he hasn't changed. He's still black and has swag. He still walks around the house like this, you know what I mean? And he's always laughing like, yeah, 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 yeah. And always pointing at random shit that's not there. Just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, my mom, she was born and raised in Korea, South Side. Now we know who doesn't watch the news in this room. <laughs> I said it in my last special, Blasian. It's tough having an Asian mom because if they think it, they say it, they have no filter. My mom just turned 70 and now all bets are off. She does not care. I never thought my mom could be worse. My mom won't even say people's names to me anymore because she would rather describe them to me. <laughs> she calls me the other day and goes, you know what, I like your friend, he nice. I go, which one? She goes, fat boy, small feet. <laughs> but I knew exactly who she was talking about. <laughs> because with my mom, my mom will say things that make you mad. She will say things that make you want to fight. But my mom feels, really feels that she can say anything to anybody. Because it's a true, it's a true. <laughs> oh, you don't like true? Why are you mad? It's a chill. <laughs> Do I lie? Do I lie? <laughs> my mom got in a fight with my wife. <laughs> now, full transparency, my wife cooks like once every couple of, you know, once a once. So my mom walks into our new house and goes, oh, what a beautiful kitchen for no cooking. <laughs> I go, mom, you can't say that in my house. No, -uh, not to my wife. She goes, why? It's a chair, it's a chair. <laughs> you don't like chair? And then to me and my wife, she goes, do I lie? <laughs> do I lie? I look at my dad for help. He's like, walk away, son, walk away. <laughs> My wife, she's white. Whoa, it got quiet, okay. <laughs> but my wife is just not white. She white, white. <laughs> now, I know a lot of people in here are white and you're questioning yourselves right now going, am I white, white? <laughs> no. My wife is whiter than you. My wife is from Gillette, Wyoming, white. You hear that? When white people and Timmy like, damn. That's white. But we got a beautiful family, man. We got two kids. My son is now five, my daughter's two. And they're black, white, and Asian. That's right, that's right. We gave birth to pandas. We call them Ling Ling and Sing Sing. In my last special, I talked about this when my son was born, because I didn't have a daughter at that time. When my son was born and the doctor handed me my son. It's crazy as a father, because I knew I would die for him, right? And I don't even know this dude. <laughs> he could be a terrible human being, but I would die for him, you know? But when they handed me my daughter, oh, it was different. I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I would kill for you. <laughs> I became a murderer overnight. 
Because the family dynamic to me is crazy. Like, I would die for my son. I would kill for my daughter. But here's what's crazy. I wouldn't kill for my wife. Because that's not my job. That's her father's job. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Because I love both of my kids the same but the love is in different directions. My son, I want him to be able to take care of himself, be strong, but I know for the rest of my life, I'm going to protect my daughter, 100%. And what's the biggest threat to women? Men. Look at that, men. <laughs> so now I hate all men. I became a lesbian activist overnight. <laughs> Slash murderer. I'm Ellen DeGeneres with a gun. Because every man's a threat to my daughter. Every single man eventually will be a threat to my daughter. I hate my son. Sometimes I hate my son. Why? Because he's a threat to my daughter. We all have baby cams. I'm watching my kids play. My daughter's playing with her little toy. My son walks over and grabs the toy from her. I get so angry, but then my daughter grabs it back and I'm like, yeah, that's my baby girl. <laughs> right? Don't take no man's crap. But then my son looks around to see if anybody's watching. <laughs> Starts backing up where she is, and he hits her with his butt. <laughs> and she falls to the ground and starts crying. I get so angry inside. I'm so mad, I wanna fuck this little dude up, right? <laughs> but I can't, he's only five, and it's not a fair fight. It's not a fair fight. <laughs> All I can do is scream, like, hey! You better stop that! And he runs off. But my daughter could hit my son with a brick in the face. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, girl. Good job, good job. <laughs> because a daughter it makes you a better man, 100%, 100%. It makes you more empathetic, you care about people, you get sensitive. I cry all the time now, <laughs> all the time. I don't even know why my wife looks at me in disgust I cry so much. <laughs> She's like, why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen my dad cry once, but I cry all the time. And then it hit me. Every generation of father gets softer and softer and softer. It means things are getting easier. My black grandfather was born in 1902 in America. Went through injustices you couldn't even imagine. My dad went through segregation, still got a PhD in nuclear physics, and had to march had to march just to drink out of the same water fountains as everybody else. Woo! That's right. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I would never drink out of a fountain. That shit's disgusting. <laughs> But my dad, man, I can't take him to the park because he has a drink out of every freaking fountain. I'm like, you fought for this? He's like, Shh, I deserve this, son, I deserve it. <laughs> I tell you, man. I'm going on six years of marriage, man. My, my parents, though, they just celebrated 48 years of marriage. That's something to clap about. So I asked my dad, I said, hey man, uh, you've been married 48 years, how'd you do it? How do you stay married that long? My dad looks at me and goes, that's simple, son. Never say the first or second thing that pops into your head. <laughs> you always say the third. I go, what's that mean? He goes, well, the first thing, you will get a divorce. The second thing, you are on the couch. But the third thing, happily ever after. I'm six years in, I don't get it, to about a month ago. Me and my wife are driving to Vegas. She packs a cooler of food for our two-year-old daughter. We get to Vegas, my wife opens up the cooler and goes, oh my God, the food all melted. I look in the cooler and notice she didn't put any ice in it. You. 
I manned up though, you know what I'm saying, baby? You, 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 you. you didn't put any ice in the cooler. My wife looks at me and goes, you don't need to put ice in a cooler. It's a cooler, duh. <laughs> now the first thing I thought was, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> but I didn't say the first thing, I didn't say the second thing, I said the third thing. I said, baby, I can't believe this cooler. <laughs> is broken. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about race. And I never used to have to do that when I came on stage, but over the last couple of years, people get very sensitive if you bring up the issue of race or racism or racial rhetoric. You have people like Lawrence Fox who say stuff like, you know what, maybe if we stop talking about it, it would go away. When has that ever worked for any social ill or personal ailment you've ever have? If you went to a doctor and was like, there's a rash on my genitals, and he said, ignore that shit. You would say, I'd like another doctor, please. I also notice people always say, oh, here we go, you liberals, always whining. First of all, I'm not liberal. I will kick your mum in the face. If you're racist, second of all, uh, how can you be called a snowflake if you're liberal or care about other people? Like, when you think about the nature of a snowflake, you can't describe me in that way. Like, what's a snowflake? Individual, white and cold as fuck, <laughs> and tend to disappear in warm climates when black people are having a good time. <laughs> Couldn't be further from the truth. But mainly when I try to talk about issues that affect this society where race is concerned, people say, oh, you seem very angry. You must have a chip on your shoulder. And I thought a lot about this chip on my shoulder. And in this world of body positivity, when we're embracing all of our curves and our flaws, I embrace having a chip on my shoulder as a black man in a racist society. <laughs> keeps me alert, keeps me alive, keeps me working for a better world. And I must share this lovely chocolate chip of mine with you guys. So I hope you're ready for some lovely social commentary cookies. Now, I'm calling them social commentary cookies, yes. I could call them home truths, but that tends to put people off when you tell them the truth. You know why? Because normally you go on a website and at the beginning it doesn't say, hey, we're gonna put a piece of coding into your computer so we can monitor all of your browsing activity and sell your data to other houses and maybe, you know, keep that for ourselves. Because we'd go, oh, well, I don't consent to this, that's kind of invasive. No, thank you. So instead you go on websites and they go, hey, you like cookies? And we go, yeah, we like cookies. Give me some cookies now. So I wanted to brace you for that. Cause I get called an angry person all the time. I don't think I'm angry all the time. Just certain situations will bring out anger in anybody. Now I know it's a comedy show and I don't want to start on a solemn tone, but I gotta tell you what happened. Um, I was attacked last week. And you don't expect to be attacked in the place you've grown up your whole life there I was, around the corner from my own mother's house. And she lives in a leafy suburb. I did not expect this to happen. But something or someone hits the back of my head. And before I could think, I've got a warm, wet liquid trickling down the back of my neck. And I thought, please don't be what I think it is. But there we were, a pigeon shit on me. <laughs> Has this ever happened to anybody else? Yeah, it's not a nice thing to happen. But was it made worse when somebody went, don't worry, that's good luck. <laughs> I'm sorry, when did feces and fortune become bedfellows? <laughs> There's nothing lucky about shit. In fact, shit is the opposite of luck. When you're not lucky, you go, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> now, I think we can test this theory. Anyone here ever bought a lottery ticket or a scratch card? Yeah, hoping to be lucky. Yeah, but you didn't wipe your bum with it before the numbers came out. <laughs> Because there's nothing lucky about shit. <laughs> nothing lucky about being shat on. Now, I want to make sure we've made the distinction between the words shit and shat. Because those carry two very different meanings. Because if someone says to you, hey, I shit in your house, you'd be like, okay, bit too much information. <laughs> you can just say I go into the toilet. Anyway, that's fine. I hope you've washed your hands. But if someone says, hey, 
I shat in your house. There's a feeling that's still there. Now you gotta buy a new rug. And get some new friends. So anyway, this pigeon shit on me, I was pissed off. And I decided to declare war on this pigeon and all of his kind. But then I thought, what a hypocrite. You can't blame an entire group or community for the actions of an individual. I'm not Liam Neeson or a Metropolitan Police Officer. So, can't do that. So, I thought the best thing to do would be to empathize and think about myself as a pigeon. And when I thought about it, you know what? Pigeons have a rough time in our society. Some of you might remember that pigeons used to exchange messages during the war. You know, when people ate licorice still. And they would exchange messages between the allies, helping us to defeat the Nazis. I say defeat, making a move to America. But the point is that pigeons helped out. Now, pigeons live like war veterans. They got limbs missing, no access to healthcare. They're homeless, congregating under bridges. It's tough when you're a pigeon. Not only that, when you're a pigeon, you're considered a second-class citizen to your white counterpart, the dove. <laughs> Did you even know that doves are just white pigeons? And they get all the good songs, all for the wings of a dove, when doves cry. There's no good pigeon songs. <laughs> Black people are like, there's one pigeon song. It's not positive. <laughs> and speaking from personal experience, when you've contributed to the infrastructure of a society and that society turns around and neglects your efforts, sometimes you gotta do wild shit so people pay attention. Maybe that's why that pigeon shouted me. And then when he went back to the Blackbirds Matter rallies, they had a conversation about it. Cause I assume all the Blackbirds kinda get together. One of the more radical birds takes the stage. We'll call him Falcon X. And no one else is doing bird pan-Africanist puns, shut up. So anyway, Falcon X comes on stage and he's like, this is some bullshit, I'ma keep shitting on them until they stop eating our eggs. Then one of the more moderate pigeons, we'll call him Martin Koo, thinking, he... <laughs> he's like, not all human beings are bad. Sometimes when you go to the park, they will give you breadcrumbs. And he's like, they also take breadcrumbs and they roll our legs in that and they fucking eat it. What are you talking about, mine? <laughs> like, even the fact that we call pigeons flying rats which is a derogatory term only to the black urban pigeons, mind you. Because when it comes to rats, there's also iniquity there. When you're a white rat, I'm not saying your life is perfect, but it could be worse. You get to work in a lab, free cosmetics, <laughs> healthcare, <laughs> exercise in a maze. When you're a black rat, what do you get? Blame for the plague. Or if you're a brown rat, you gotta do youth work in a sewer, teaching turtles kung fu and shit. That's no kind of life. Doesn't just happen on land either. This shit is taking place in the sea too. Some of you will be familiar with the species Orcus orca, known in documentaries as the blackfish, but more commonly known as a killer whale. All these fish in the sea and the predominantly black one is called a killer. Is that fair? Why can't they be called sea pandas? I'm just saying that killer whales look more like pandas than sea lions look like lions. Like think about how we revere and look at lions. King of the savannah plains. Even lion kings. There's no sea lion king because it don't look like a fucking lion. Can you imagine the first time a kid was told they was gonna meet an underwater lion, how disappointing that would have been? <laughs> Marine biologist comes home, he's like, hey there, son. I know I haven't been around as much as I should have been, but daddy's got a surprise for you. We finally discovered a new species, a sea lion, son. Dad, are you fucking serious? You guys have discovered a motherfucking sea lion? I don't really care for your language, son, but yeah, that's... <laughs> My fault for not being there, I guess. But yeah, son, that's what happens. So now they get down to the lab and he's like, behold, son, in all of nature's majesty, a sea lion. Kid's like, what the fuck is this? It's a sea lion, son. It's an otter with a fucking wax. You should have called it a sea badger. Don't you get tired of disappointing me, motherfucker? <laughs> Meanwhile, the biggest killer in the sea 
gets to enjoy the name Great White Shark. And all we do is talk about its greatness and its whiteness. Should be called a colonial fish, if you ask me. Out here just taking over. So when David Attenborough's on Blue Planet, he's like, since ancient times, the great white shark has been one of history's greatest hunters and most efficient killers. But we want to know, what's its secret? Oh, I know, privilege! <laughs> Now you can tell me guys, did that seem kind of angry? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Well, that's fine. Some of you say yes, yeah, some of you say no. Well, I'll put that down to the fact that rarely do black people in our community get to explore the entirety of our emotional spectrum. It's not just from zero to anger all the time. There's a sliding scale. Also, just because we raise our voices doesn't mean we're angry. If you learn nothing else today, moving forward, Think of black shouting the same way you think about white women's tears. In that sometimes when we do it, we're in a good mood. And also sometimes it's the only recourse of action you have for people to pay attention to your needs. And finally, black people and white women telling us to calm down does not help. Yeah. So now you have that understanding, let me give you an idea of the sliding scale. We all get angry sometimes. And I don't go from zero to 10, it's a scale. So like one for me would be like, you know when you go into a room in the dark or you're not looking and you stub your toe on some furniture, but it's so painful, you're like, someone is trying to kill me in my own home. <laughs> Cause once I went into my nephew's bedroom, he had a Buzz Lightyear on the floor, I stepped on it and I was so angry. I was like, I wish this was Toy Story and you could come to life. Cause I fucking kill you, Buzz. <laughs> right, just show you halfway up the scale. I have a condition called misphonia. It means certain sounds make me very sensitive, like snoring or loud chewing. And I'm telling you this because I had to move out of my housemate's flat. I was living with a housemate, I had to find my own flat because this guy would make so much noise when he was eating because he refused to go to the dentist. I would fantasize about slitting his throat so he could bleed out all over the table. Now, be honest with me guys, does that seem kind of dramatic? Some say yeah, some say no. To those of you that say yeah, let me ask you a question. Who the fuck chews soup? <laughs> My housemate, that's fucking who. Yeah. Now, I wanted to give you an idea of what makes me angry. And I'm imagining some of you are like, well, based on what he's saying, then racism must be level 10 for Dane. But you'd be incorrect. Most people of color can tell you we are so used to discrimination, it's become part of the atmosphere. It's something you have to consider in every activity you do. Anything you do, you gotta think about how it's gonna affect you as a person of color in Western civilization. So I would say no, racism is not a 10 for me, it's more like an eight or a nine. 10 for me would be people still denying that racism exists. And those people are still out there. And some of them are black and brown people too, trying to find work and avoid getting shape ups at barbershops. The point is, <laughs> thank you black people that got that. <laughs> but the point is that, you know, can we still deny the existence of racism in a post camera phone society in a world where there are two men called Rage Charles and Stevie Wonder, who between both those guys have written at least three songs about racism. So if a blind man can see it, it must really exist. Some of you are like, but my brown friend says, your brown friend can't play the piano with his fucking eyes closed. <laughs> so I know that the conversation about privilege is a hard one to have, because you live in a capitalist society where you're told you gotta work for everything, be a part of this rap race, and for you to win, someone lazier than you has to lose. You've all got the same 24 hours. <laughs> right, to get out there and do some work. So if it's gonna ease this conversation somewhat, I am now on stage prepared to discuss some aspects of black privilege. Would you like that? Yeah. Well, it don't fucking exist. How dare you? Not shy, lady. I laid the trap, you sprung it. Did you see that shit? <laughs> Sorry, mysterious racists in the shadows. I'll set you up there. Uh... <laughs> it's a nice looking crowd, man. This is dope. This is so dope. Let me ask y'all a question. You ever get a compliment and an insult at the same time? Somebody say something to you like, you look good for your age. You look nice today. But 
supposed to mean? I thought it was a nice outfit I had on yesterday. Yo, I'm walking down the street the other day, minding my business. This dude gonna stop me and say, hey, brother, I'm gonna take a lot of your time. You know who you look like? Like an old ass Chris Brown, man. say be blessed and just walk off. <laughs> like, how old are we talking? Shit. I still got two albums left of me. <laughs> I get a type of disrespect all the time, man. People think I look like anything that's beige. <laughs> Fucking Vanessa Williams, <laughs> Lionel Richie. Terrence Howard, how the hell I like Lionel Richie and fucking Lucius Lyons at the same damn time? You're gonna sing this song, Hakeem. <laughs> I love Terrence Howard's trembly ass voice. You're gonna sing this song, Hakeem. He always sound like he cold and go to a pothole and say, you're gonna sing this song. He anemic, he gets ass a sweater and a space heater. I was in the furniture store one day shopping. This lady gonna come to me and grab my arm and say, baby, the couch is this color. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> Using my arm, it's no damn swatch. <laughs> it's mad disrespectful. Anybody here tried to Ancestry.com before? Yeah, yeah. What'd you find out? I got out of hand. Okay, what? I got out of hand, brothers and sisters. A lot of half uncle. <laughs> what the fuck is a half uncle? <laughs> What's that like a dude to take care of you when your daddy leave? <laughs> Go upstairs, I'm your half uncle now. What the fuck is a half uncle? I'm always just making shit up. I'm your three-quarter cousin. What? <laughs> half uncle. What? I'm gonna change the name of the special to Half Uncle. Damn unknown, Jason Williams Half Uncle. I don't think we should waste our money on Ancestry.com, especially black people. Right? Like white folks, y'all probably can go on Ancestry.com, pay your money. Find out what your great grandpappy had on in 1406. <laughs> what type of change he had in his corduroys, all that type of stuff. Black folks, we know the story. Yeah. Don't waste your money, man. I sent in $35 on Ancestry.com. They gonna send me back a picture of myself <laughs> from Facebook from Throwback Thursdays. <laughs> I got a lot of my mind, people. I'm trying to figure out what type of old black man I want to be. Yo, that's serious business. Different types of old black dudes. For example, you got the old black dude who brings God into every situation, right? My wife's grandfather's like, he's a deacon in South Carolina. Called from Baltimore one day. She's like, hey, grandpa, when are you and grandma gonna drive to Baltimore to see the twins? Haven't seen them in a while. Takes this long pause. Let me pray about it. <laughs> Hope for the Lord will make a way. I'm like, uh, he already made a way. It's called 95 North. <laughs> you ain't need God for that situation. I like when I meet old dudes. Sometimes you meet an old dude and you can tell he's been to jail because their vocabulary don't match what they're saying. I talked to this old dude the other day. I knew he was in jail because he was like, yeah, man. I was on the bus the other day, fell asleep, missed my stop. Woke up, panicked, tried to shake the back door, screamed, back door! <laughs> Nobody opened the door up. Finally, I got to the next stop, and the driver let me go on my own recognizance. Like, what? <laughs> Your own recognizance? Your ass been to jail several times. <laughs> you probably catching the bus to jail. <laughs> I'm gonna teach y'all something tonight that I found out the other day and it blew my mind because it works every single time. I can tell how old another black man is 
by what type of animal he calls me. I say it again, I can tell how old another black man is by what type of animal he calls me. If I'm walking down the street and the guy's like, what's up, dog? 20 to 35 years old. If I'm walking down the street and the guy's like, man, these cats out here are tripping. It's 57 years old. Yeah, if you ever hear somebody say, one more of these job ass turkeys. Gets in my face, he is 73 years old. He's hoping the Lord will make a way. He I am a young black woman trapped in an auntie's body. That is, that is what's happening. I can't change it, can't fix it. Um, I'm in my 20s, I look like I raised all of you. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> From these hips, baby, all of you. Um, I have no regrets, y'all were great kids. I have no regrets, okay. <laughs> We're a family. Okay. So I'm just letting y'all know, that's what's happening. It's, kinda, it's getting kind of scary, I don't know if y'all know this. A lot of new woke white people, ah! <laughs> oh God, they're new, they're woke, they're white, and they want to talk to you. Okay, um, woo, woo, <laughs> pretty intense. Um, I don't know, I can't really handle it. It's getting, it's getting too much, like, uh, it's not really making sense, and it's getting a little aggressive. Like, me and my friend, we were walking down the street, and I guess we both have afros, so I guess we were asking for it. It's our fault, we were asking for it. <laughs> we were walking around with our afros, and um, these white girls saw us, and they were like, Queens! <laughs> and I was like, what? And they were like, Queens, yes, slay, serve them, drag them, Queens! And it's like, okay, Queens, slay. Can a bitch just be like an office manager? You know what I mean? <laughs> Support my clerical work. I don't know how to slay. I don't have the weaponry, okay? Chill out, chill out. I got an AA degree. Support that, you know what I mean? <laughs> They don't want to support me when I, like, I do shit like that. That's what makes me mad. They don't support me like in the McDonald's line. You know what I mean? No one's behind me like, yes, queen, demand fresh fries. No, you're worse. <laughs> yes, we'll wait. 15 minutes, we'll wait. <laughs> it's upsetting. I do have three white friends. Yes, I count them. They count me. I think fair's fair. I think fair's fair. I'm their one black friend. They're my three white friends. Let's relax. They're pretty aggressive too, I don't really. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, I don't know, they, they wanna be on the right side of history, but it's like they're overcorrecting, it's not making any sense. Like uh, we were walking around Vegas at nighttime taking pictures, you know, knees out, ankles out, you know, ladies night. And um, <laughs> we ran into this problem where like we started taking pictures and um, these girls would take pictures of me at night, okay, no flash. Now, um, <laughs> I don't know if y'all know how like night works and melanin works, okay? But um, night's dark and I'm dark. That's science, okay? These are num I ran the I ran the numbers. Two plus two equals black, and that you turn the flash on, okay? Um, so these girls are taking pictures. I was like, hey, are you gonna you gonna turn the flash on these pictures? And they're like, oh my god, Felicia, we can't just flash you like that in the middle of the night. That's really rude, and just just to like turn the flash on, like and pretend we can't see you. And it's like, okay, well, you actually can't see me, and. Um, <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's also way more racist and hurtful just to like post these pictures on Instagram the next day. Like, I didn't go to Vegas with you bitches. You know what I mean? <laughs> Turn the flash on. I love you. Turn the flash on. And also, don't tag me in the night sky, bitch. You know I'm not up there. You, got, you know, tag me appropriately. Tag appropriately. Just make that clear. <laughs> I'm a third wheel a lot, thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You want anyway, um, you got a girlfriend? Let's go all out. Um, I, I am a third wheel a lot, I don't know. I, I like it. People don't, people don't wanna be a third wheel. What's the problem, you know what I mean? They will pay for your food. It's a great time, they're in love, you know? <laughs> My favorite thing about like being a third wheel is that that couple could be having sex at any point and they're hanging out with me. What an honor, you know what I mean? <laughs> what an honor. I wouldn't do it, you know what I mean? If I could fuck, I'm not hanging out with anybody. I don't, I don't feel secure in my friendships, okay, until my friends are making love and they stop. They just stop midway and they look at each other and they're like, I wish Felicia was here. It's like, yes! I am there watching with this guy. We're, we're fucking. Okay, um. My one friend, she's a model. I, I got my dating advice from her. She was like, hey, if you want guys to ask you on a date, just do what I do, just stare at them. 
That's what she told me to do. So I was like, let's go, you know? So we went out to the club. Good times, you know? She was looking at one guy. It was lit. It was so nice. He came over, he bought her a drink. They started dancing, kissing. I was like, fuck yeah, you know? I'm looking at his friend. I'm smiling at him. He's coming over. I'm like, oh shit, you know? I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, uh, do we have a fucking problem? <laughs> I was flirting, sir. I was flirting. <laughs> But I did fight him, you know what I mean? I did fight him um, <laughs> because <laughs> he ran up on me. <laughs> I did fight him. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna end on this. I'm gonna end on, I'm gonna end on something that uh, I think the people need to know. Um, men, men are bad people. And uh, <laughs> bad people, just because they're so confident, I'm not even coming after you guys are just really way too confident. Um, it's, it's, it's getting too much, it's overbearing. It's, I can't handle it. Um, and I know this, I know for a fact that men are the most confident human beings alive because um, I used to be a bank teller. I was a bank teller for years, okay? And every day, I'm not over-exaggerating this number, every single day, a man would hit on me through the bank teller window, okay? Negative money in his account. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's below zero. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Every day, a man would just do that. And he'd ask me out, he'd be like, hey, I wanna take you somewhere. I'm like, sir, I can see you can't take me. <laughs> you can't take me. You can't take me, you know? But I'd go, because he's so confident, he's so confident. I actually worked, uh, my part-time job, I actually worked as a barista at Starbucks, right? That was my job. I worked, as a, I worked at Starbucks for a couple years. I, I know, you guys look at me, you're thinking, wow, a smiling black man with lots of energy who works at Starbucks? You don't say. Like, I know, I know. <laughs> and I'm not gay. I don't know how I got hired. I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> but I realized a lot of things while working at Starbucks, though. Cause you know what, here's the thing, though. When you work at Starbucks, you realize a lot of things about your customers, right? Because just because you have good looks, lots of money, and cars, doesn't necessarily make you intelligent. Because at the Starbucks I worked at, we had a drive-thru, right? So I'm working at the drive-thru one day, car comes up to the speaker box. So I go, boom, bienvenue, welcome to Starbucks, how can I help you? And all I hear the intercom is, uh, oh yes, can I have like a tall latte? <laughs> I'm like, okay, a tall latte, is there anything else? Oh no, that's about it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Cardi B. Uh, Comes to 350, just come to the window. Uh, I can't. Well, why not? Oh, there's a car in front of me? Hello? It's a drive-through. Like, you just, you just, you like, you pull up your car next, and you just like, when the car, like, how fucking stupid are you? <laughs> like, a car leaves, you pull up behind them. That's how this shit works for fucking thousands of years. <laughs> but then I realized every, re every restaurant must have their own idiotic customers. Every business must have their own idiotic customers. I guarantee you that people that go to Tim Hortons, okay? Tim Hortons, a coffee chain around Canada. I'm sure that people that go to Tim Hortons and buys the roll up the rim cups and then they'll roll it up and they'll say, sorry, try again. And then they'll roll it back down and roll it back, back up again just to see if it changes. <laughs> They're like, uh, sorry, my cup says, sorry, try again. I'm trying again, it's not really working. I'm not, I haven't won yet. I'm trying again, it's not working. I want a new cup. Okay, okay. <laughs> but Starbucks caters to the higher clientele, right? The rich people. And at the same time, women love coffee. So every ship at Starbucks was like an episode of the Kardashians. <laughs> and some women feel they need to justify every modification of that drink with a story. Like, they'll come in and they'll be like, ha, oh, yes, can I have like a grande latte? Because I feel good about myself. It's 2022. You know what? Just make it a venti vanilla latte. And my daughter, she's doing really well in school. Math is a favorite, favorite subject. Can I have decaf, by the way? And my son, he's on the hockey team. He just won his first game. Go Panthers. I love you, son. Can I have two bubbles of hazelnut? And you know what? The summer's coming. That's right. The summer's coming. I just want to look good. My nice little tight white bikini. That's right. I want to look good. My nice little tight white bikini. By the way, I want non fat milk steamed at 160 degrees. I serve at 159 degrees. I'm like a spatula. It's having the fucking eye, okay? <laughs> But you know what, girl? I am divorced, I'm a single lady, I am out there, but have you seen my pool boy? Oh my God, my pool boy, my pool boy, with the grande muscles and the venti cock? Oh my God, he's so delicious, girl. So delicious. Oh my God. 
Oh my god, the pool isn't the only thing that's wet right now. Oh my god, girl. Girl, I want so many things right now, but right now, do you know what I want? I want triple venti heat decaf, non fat, no foam, two bubs sleep at 160 degrees, venti vanilla latte. Mm -hmm -hmm. <laughs> and some of these women are really hot, so I feel I should still hit on them. So I'm like a venti vanilla, non fat, no foam. Are you sure you don't want any uh, hot chocolate? Mm -hmm. It's a great line to pick up women with. It's also a great line to get fired by, too. Um. <laughs> but sometimes when you work with customers, or sometimes when you work with the public, sometimes your friends will come in and you have to serve them like they're a regular customer, but you really want to give them shitty service for the fact that they're your friends. <laughs> this is a true story. A couple years ago, I'm at drive through my friend Chris comes up to the speaker box. I can't tell it's him because he's too far away and it's a night. So I treat him like a regular customer. So I go, boom, bienvenue, welcome to Starbucks. How can I help you? And all I hear the intercom is, cock! <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, could you repeat that? Uh, cappuccino? <laughs> black cock! I want your black cock. I want your black cock. You want my black cock. I want your black cock. You want my black cock. I want your black cock with whipped cream. You want my black cock with whipped cream. I want your black cock with whipped cream. Chris, is that you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so when Chris come to the window, so Chris comes up to the window. Little do I realize there's a car behind him who heard the entire conversation. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck Chris, you're gonna get me fired? Oh shit. All right. All right, let's do this. Um, <sighs> boom. Bienvenue, welcome to Starbucks. How can I help you? And all I hear the intercom is, hi. Can I have what he's having? <laughs> Some hot chocolate, c'est moi, c'est chocolat. It's <laughs> a true story. <laughs> and you know Chris, yeah, you know him. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun, man. Good to be here. Good to be here. Um, a lot of things. Uh, now I'm back in uh, now I'm back in Montreal for a little bit, which is kind of cool, though. But when I live in LA, everything's very different in LA, right? Like I do get a lot of questions from Americans about Canada. Some of the questions make absolute sense, and that's fine. But some questions make no sense at all. Like one question I got asked not long ago is, uh, "Hey, man, is there racism in Canada?" I'm like, obviously there's racism in Canada. We just don't do the Klan. Yeah, that's how nice and polite we are as a country. <laughs> like, we'll be racist, but we'll be respectful when we're racist. You know? Like, we won't use derogatory terms. Instead, we'll say, you people, you know? <laughs> Same intent, but sounds a lot more polite, right? <laughs> like, the only difference between Canada and the Charlottesville riots is the fact that in Canada, if you see a group of angry white guys walking around carrying sticks, we call them hockey players. <laughs> that's why you'll never see a burning cross in Canada, because that's a waste of two perfectly good hockey sticks. <laughs> but uh, speaking of white supremacists, uh, <laughs> have you guys ever noticed that the people who proclaim white supremacy are the least looking superior people you have ever seen in your entire fucking life? Have you seen these people? Just once, I would love to see a hot white supremacist, right? Just once. Just once, I would love to see a hot white supremacist. I want to see a white supremacist so hot, she makes me go, I'd pick cotton for her. Like, just once. Just once. Just once. Right? Just once. I would love to see a white supremacist. She's whipping me in the fields, and I'm like, but what's the safe word? You know, just, just once. Just once. <laughs> but it's 
crazy, man. These white supremacists, you, you've seen them on the news. They're always balding at the top, long, uncombed hair, a nasally voice of like, I hate Mexican. <laughs> With a scruffy beard of one chin hair that's longer and darker than the rest. <laughs> and that's just the women. Uh, <laughs> And then you see these guys, you see these guys, they're always wearing a camouflage cap with like a white wife beater and a huge beer belly. Like when did the dad bod become a superior bod, right? <laughs> like how could you be the superior race but your kryptonite is a push-up? Like I don't get it. <laughs> but these guys are always, they're always angry, they're always angry, they're always proclaiming something, right? They're always like, brothers and sisters. <laughs> I don't know, they don't go to school. Uh, <laughs> Brothers and sisters, our white skin is superior and it's more desirable. No, it's not. You know what's a more desired skin color? Olive skin, tan skin, and white people love tanning. It's true, white people love tanning more than they like cooking without seasoning, you know? <laughs> Enough of the raisins, Janice. Use paprika, seriously. <laughs> Spent 200 years looking for the fucking thing. You think you'd use it by now. <laughs> but it's true, man. Um, white people love tanning. Well, white people love tanning so much. Americans spend $5 billion a year on tanning. $5 billion a year to look darker. Yeah. At that point, we should change it from once you go black, you don't go back to once you tan, you can't join the clan. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> but it begs the question, how do we stop racism? How do we stop racism? You know how we stop racism? The same way Will Farrell and John C. Riley got along in Step Brothers. Yeah. You take two groups of people that don't like each other, force them to live together, they're gonna realize they have a lot in common. Yeah. I'm saying we solve racism by taking all the white supremacists of the earth, send them to Jamaica for seven days, they'll have a fucking good time. <laughs> Yeah. Take Wilbur, Wilbur who goose steps the Hitler speeches and wears white hoods, send him to Jamaica for seven days and at the end of those seven days, he's gonna come back with cornrows in his hair, a Sean Paul CD in one hand, a piece of jerk chicken in the other, and the only black people he's terrorizing are the black women on the dance floor. Just like, yeah, what's your name, 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 where you come from, where you come from, where you come from, where you come from. Let, let me put it in you, let me put it in you, let me put it in you, let me put it in you. Come gal, come gal, come gal, come gal. <laughs> All the black girls are like, is it your name Wilbur? <laughs> Yummy went to Jamaica as Wilbur, come back from Jamaica as white chocolate, yum. The black girl's like, oh my God, okay. That's what I want to see. I want to see Wilbur, now white chocolate, on the dance floor of Jamaica with two black girls on each arm, another one grinding in front of him. He's wearing a Hussein Bolt t-shirt, <laughs> smoking a giant blunt of ganja, and the only thing he's proclaiming then and there is, brothers and sisters, this is the worst kush me smoke in me life, huh? Don't get me wrong, I love my kids. I would die for any of them. I don't like these fuckers. <laughs> There's a difference, because children are unlikable. I don't care what anybody says, children are unlikable, okay? I'm not talking about your adult child that you have cultivated because you took them through the process. I'm talking about children because they come here as assholes. That's the way it works. God gives you an asshole. And then it's your job as a parent to turn them into a functioning, contributing member of society. That is why God makes children so cute. So you don't drown them in a fucking tub. Oh, that must be your mother. That must be your mother, because you just went, she turned to her and she was like, I can't believe you're clapping for this. 
She's clapping for this because she's remembering you as a child when you were an asshole. But she's a good parent, so you're now a good person. I can tell because your incredulousness with your mother laughing lets me know that you're now a good person. But what you don't know that she knows is that there was a time when you were a fucking asshole. Um, uh, last year, I went to Haiti to help out during the pandemic. My uncle, his Haitian accent is so strong, he used to pronounce peanuts, penis. He'll be on the airplane, where's my penis? <laughs> no, I want my penis in my mouth right now, uh-oh. <laughs> why you, why you, why you, why you play with my penis? <laughs> uh-oh, why you, why you do this? That was my dad all day, why you, why you? When I was younger, I used to tell people I was Jamaican. Cause nobody had love for Haitians. They said we did voodoo, we had AIDS, we wore white socks and dress shoes. I mean, that one is kind of true, but still, the point is, I was talking about Jamaica. Jamaicans, you know, Jamaicans like, blah, blah, bad, bad man, boom, bad, blah, shoot fire, shoot fire. I don't even know what that means. Shoot fire. One more clap. Boom, blah, blah. You want to talk Jamaican or sound Jamaican, all you got to listen how they talk. When they talk, they talk backwards. They don't say, I'm coming soon. They say, me soon come. <laughs> me soon be there, Trevor, Winston, Donovan. <laughs> That's all the names they really have. Trevor, Winston, Donovan. <laughs> Trevor, where is Winston? He playing with Donovan. Jamaicans don't use no H's and words that have H's. Listen carefully. Come here. Umio er. Erwi. Hospital. It takes way more effort to say hospital. Trevor, you mean hospital? That's what I say. Hospital. But then they put the H's on words that don't have H's. Take it easy. <laughs> get inside. <laughs> Let me get two eggs. How you want your eggs? Over easy. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, J, K, N. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. <laughs> Haitians don't have that power. We don't have that power now. But that's why you'll never, you'll never see a Haitian pimp. You know what I'm saying? You know, to be a pimp, you gotta have that power in your voice. Like, yo, where my money, girl? Bam! Even Puerto Rican pimps. Coño, maricón, nosotros. Siéntate! Coño, maricón! You know what I'm You hear that power? <laughs> Haitians, we don't have that. They, if, you see, if you ever see a Haitian pimp, they have a hard time getting their money from their women because they, they don't take them seriously. So you tell me you don't have my money? Oh. Oh, oh, you crazy? Why you? Me? What do you mean you don't have my money? Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. You work Monday, Tuesday, Friday. You have nothing. Why are you, why are you doing this to us? Thank you. Thank you. Some true Haitians here. They know Haitians. Mano me. They know Haitians. Suck myself. Well, in, in, uh, in 97, I was gonna go to Haiti, right? I told my mother, I'm going to visit Haiti. And my mother, she said, be careful. They are kidnapping, and I don't have kidnapping money, so watch it. I'm like, mom, nobody keeps kidnapping money as a thing. This is for rent, this is for food, and this is for kidnapping. You never know. I know. What they was doing, it, they was kid, they'll kidnap like a friend or a relative and, um, and they'll cut off their ear and put in a box with a little note. If you ever want to see your brother ever again, give us $500. <laughs> Haitians, we don't need a lot of money. Just give us $275. <laughs> if you ever want to see your brother ever again. The thing is, can you really recognize your love doing the air in a box by itself? Like, oh shit, they got Steve. <laughs> How you know? That's Steve's ear. I know his ear. I used to whisper things to him all the time. 
We had to save Steve. Oh my God! I don't think my dad would have been able to recognize my ear. My dad would have been like, I do not know that's him. Send me his face and then we could talk. They're not gonna see this on the album. <laughs> Correct me, people. We like, we like, we like the heat. Like, I'm, a lot of people are bothered by this this heat wave going on all over America. But, uh, not nah, you see, I got my hoodie on. I'm gonna fuck you know? <laughs> if, if you ever like, if you ever like feeling hot, or like you can't take the heat, just uh, where where are the real New Yorkers now? Where my New Yorkers at? So New York, New Yorkers will know. You just gotta think back to how New Yorkers. New York has some brutal winters, like fucking. Think about those winters and be like, all oh, right, this is not so bad, this is not so bad, this is not so bad. Because when, I remember last February, the weatherman said, today is going to be seven. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be five. And I was like, what the hell is the difference? Just say it's going to be cold as hell, motherfucker. Are you trying to make no news out of news? The next day, when it dropped down to five, I'm like, oh shit, he's right. Five is worse than seven. <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. It's... My balls is way up in my uterus right now. I can't. You know it's cold when homeless people get their shit together. Ooh, I gotta get me a job. I can't do this no more. I gotta fill out some applications. This is. Do you know after 10 degrees, you could actually feel every single digit changing? When it's 30, 34, you can't tell, like 40, 40. But when it's 10 and less, like, ooh, that's nine, that's nine, that's nine. Ooh, eight, that's eight, that's eight. Seven, seven! <laughs> and when it's that cold, you don't wanna do nothing. You, you don't wanna get out of bed. You don't wanna go for a walk, cause a walk is a huge task. Because you don't know if it's the ground, or if it's black ice. Is, is this black ice? Cause I busted my shit last week. Is this black ice? 17 more blocks. <laughs> and white people, why y'all call it black ice? <laughs> it's not even black, it's see to ice. <laughs> or just clear ice. Y'all just wanna give us a bad name for no reason. Watch out, there's nigga ice everywhere. <laughs> If anything, it's, it's Puerto Rican ice. Because <laughs> when you step on, you're going to do this shit. Adios mios. <laughs> Coño. Siéntate. <laughs> you ever hear the weatherman where he's saying shit like, um, it's 65, but with the wind chill, it feel like it's 10. Well, that motherfucker is 10. <laughs> Are you trying to trick us? Is this a test? How the hell is 65, but it feel, what it feel like, that's what it is. I'm supposed to wear two outfits, one for 65, one for 10? Ladies, like a guy told me I got a 10-inch dick, but it feel like it's two. <laughs> Stupid is two. It's the windshield factor, girl. Get out my house, windshield penis. It's the windshield penis. You hear that? Thank you, baby. She know the windshield penis. Let it out, baby girl, let it out. Just, I'll wait, I, I need all these little laughs I could get. I don't give a fuck about that. We'll wait till you finish. <laughs> let me tell you, I thought I was a real New Yorker, man. Then, I'm, then, I, then I found someone who's way more New Yorker. I grew up and born and raised in New York City. Uh, but East New York, uh, if, you, uh, if you know that, it's a section in Brooklyn. 
For the white people that did not know, I, I, I urge you to go to East New York if you like running. <laughs> you got a lot of exercise in East New York. <laughs> it's a neighboring town to Brownsville. It's like, like that's where Mike Tyson's on, so that's how you could get. So, um, I, so anyway, um, I thought I was so New York. And then, uh, have you guys ever seen this video of, this, of the dude that was sleeping on the train and the rat crawled on his face? I'm not making this shit up. It's real. Look it up. Google man on train, rat on face. <laughs> If, you, if you're not from New York, I tell you right now, rats are not scared. They, rats be walking around like, I wish you would, motherfucker. <laughs> Holding their balls and shit, turning their tails like this. Yo, you finish with that donut or what? All right? Rats, rats be looking for the train like we do. They be looking for the train like, what is next train? Next train. I've been here for 25 minutes. Don't back the fuck up. So this man was on the, the number two or the A train, I can't remember, and he was passed out, right? Passed, just knocked out. <laughs> and the rat came out of nowhere, right? Just came out of nowhere, got on his foot, climbed up on his leg, jumped on his chest, and then paw cord right on his face. <laughs> and started nibbling on his mouth, right? Oh, oh yeah, I'm dead serious, right? And the man woke up like, uh, 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 uh. and the rat was like, all right, don't push, don't push, bitch. Anyway, where was I? And then the rat just scurried away, didn't, didn't run. And this is how much of a New Yorker this man was. After the rat left, his ass went right back to sleep. <laughs> like nothing happened. <laughs> Dude, you can't go back to sleep after the rat been on your face. Sleep time is over. It's rat patrol time. Cause there's rats on the train. Fuck snakes on the plane, rats. <laughs> I'll take a snake over a rat. Would you prefer a snake or a rat, baby girl? She said, probably a snake, probably a snake. <laughs> what do you take, a snake or a rat? Snake. <laughs> She's a snake. Amber, Becky, what do you take? I'm sorry, I apologize, you just like, what's your name? Maria. Maria, okay, yeah. Snake or a rat? She said, people in the back, she said, a rat. She's from a, she's from a country, she's from a farm. <laughs> Where you from? Seattle. Oh, okay, my bad. Well, you're a hero, Maria. What happened? You said the N-word, what? I don't want no goddamn nigga snakes on my <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Please forgive me. <laughs> you know what's still funny in a relationship, no matter how long you've been with someone, what's still funny in a relationship? Um, queefs. <laughs> a lot of black people have no idea what I'm talking about. I just found out like a month, six months ago, my damn self. I thought it was a girl that lived in my building. I'm like, yo, queef, get down here. Someone wanna see you. If you do not know what it is, I'm gonna tell you right now, you look very confused, sir. When a guy and a girl having sex, the guy pull out and go back in and <laughs> Now he got ah! Pussy farts. I call them angels whispers. And it's really not funny in the very beginning of a relationship. You know, when you first start seeing each other and it happened, both y'all get a little tense like like, oh shit. And the girl, she's like, oh shit. I hope you didn't think that was my ass. But after you get to know each other, you have a lot of fun. Like, like ah. And she's like, ah. it's talking to you. Well, can you tell her, shut up? I can't focus with her yapping back here. I had a girl, she tried to pass off a fart as a queef. I was like, yo, you, you farted. She's like, no, that was a queef. No, I know farts, I know queefs. 
I've been listening to him for a long time. Your ass farted. It was a quick two things. Number one, there's a funky smell in the air right now. And two, we're not having sex. <laughs> Who the hell be walking and queefing like, ooh. My vagina is a mess today. <laughs> I've been queefing all day, girl. <laughs> I gotta get my queef pills. I can't. <laughs> So now I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Axel, Axel Blake. Originally from London, but now from Dunstable. Yeah. Five foot ten. Six one in heels though. Hey. And last year, I won Britain's Got Talent. Thank you. And no, life's changed ever so slightly, I'm not gonna lie, ever so slightly. Got family coming out of the woodworks, I didn't even know it was family. I, I'm telling you, you know, just, Nigerian prince emailed me as well. He did. Hello, this is your father speaking. Caribbean, jog on, mate, jog on. All sorts. Yeah, it's been very weird. Exes, or oh, exes trying to come back. Look, they're, and they're brave. Hi, 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 hi. I said, no, nah, love, bye. <laughs> bye, Felicia. <laughs> that was her name, yeah. Just, even when I won, even when I won, my missus just said to me, oh my gosh, we did it. I was like, we? <laughs> I'm single now. <laughs> We. Oui. Didn't know you spoke French. We. Oui. <laughs> Au revoir. It's <laughs> like we, oui, you know. GP, <laughs> G. GP, G what do you say? She's lovely. Thank you, mate. <laughs> do you know her? <laughs> we need words after the show, mate. <laughs> GP was acting weird. Oh my gosh. Second, I, the, the week I won, I, I booked a doctor's appointment. And I remember I walked to the doctor's, yeah? Priory Gardens, that's the name. Walked to the, yeah, yeah. I was, come on, you know, you know. Walked there, GP said to me, you're not gonna be around here much longer, are you? I was like. Am I gonna die? He said, no, you won, Britain's Got Talent. I was like, we'll leave with that then, innit? Put me in for a blood test and be like, you're not gonna be around here much longer, right? You think I'm thinking? Still ain't got my results. I just don't like the pressure. I don't know, I don't know. People acting very weird. I always get in that scenario where people kind of look at me and they'll be like, where do I? Where do I know you? I know where. Oh my God, where? do you know? Where do I know you from? I never told them. I'm like, Pornhub, page 10. <laughs> BBC category, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right then. What went over your heads, you little dirty bastards, all right. I know your category, yeah, I know what you're watching. Jerk, mate, yeah. Are you tired of jerking? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I just get in that scenario. No, I remember around in the neighborhood, everyone was very nosy. Very, very nosy. My missus said to me, you need to start going through the back door. Just come through the back door. Come through the back door. I said, well, anal. She goes, of oh, the house. Actually, of the house. <laughs> so you will lead with that then, isn't it? These <laughs> people just nosy. It's in, I don't know. Because I've got a ring doorbell. So when people kind of walk around the side, I kind of see what's happening. And I just don't like people hanging around the house. The other day, I walked up to someone, I went up behind him, I said, who sent you, huh? Who sent you? The sun, the mirror, TV lashes, who sent you? I said, you did Amazon. I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> sir, 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 sir. There's my air fryer. Oh my God. <laughs> gotta love an air fryer. Have you got air fryer? No. Gotta love, make some noise, you got air fryer? <laughs> gotta love an air fryer. Yeah. It's, just, it's just been a weird time, you know? People asking me for my autograph, that was weird. 
Literally, people go, can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph? Where I'm from, originally London, people wouldn't do that. They'll be like, can I have your license or registration, please? <laughs> That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm used to. And I didn't realise there's a difference between an autograph and a signature, yeah? I've got an autograph now, but at the time, I didn't have one. I was literally signing my signature <laughs> on this piece of paper. I didn't know what I was signing. A couple of weeks later, Nat West called me and said, you've tried to open 64 bank accounts. <laughs> And pictures. Oh, pictures. Love taking pictures. But at least know who you're taking a picture with. Because some people don't know. You know? Lady said to me, oh, can I have a picture? I was posing away. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and as she walked off, I heard her say, Stormzy's put on a bit of weight, hasn't he? <laughs> Stormzy, I look nothing like Stormzy. <laughs> Anthony Joshua, okay, I understand the mistake there. I can see what you mean there. Stormzy, no. It's been a fun time. Very weird, yeah? You know watching Britain's Got Talent now? Yeah. No, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. I'm addicted. It's weird. A whole year ago, I was on that stage crying, saying to myself, I could buy my family a house. Yeah. Now, a year later, I'm still crying. Because <laughs> I spent all the money trying to heat that same house. It's just, it's... I'm gonna let you in a little secret, not many people know, yeah? So originally, I didn't intend on going on Britain's Got Talent, you know? I didn't. What had happened was a family member put my name forward without me knowing, yes. And I remember it was about a Sunday, at four o'clock, I was sitting on the couch, feet up, toes out, wiggling, you know? <laughs> the remote above my head. You know when the battery stopped working, it seems to work. <laughs> then I got a phone call, went mm -hmm. She goes, hi, oh, is that Axel? I said, maybe. <laughs> you reveal your identity first, isn't it? I don't know who you are. <laughs> she, then she told me who she was and who she worked for. And she said, we want to know if you're willing to showcase your skills on Britain's Got Talent. And I was like, what my skill? She goes, yeah. I said, you know about my skills? She goes, yeah. I said, which one? My naked helicopter dance, yeah. <laughs> it's a skill I acquired many years ago. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm tired, I walk past the mirror, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> Some of you don't quite can't do it, so it's a bit, <laughs> <laughs> But that's the skill I thought she was talking about. That's the skill I thought. She goes, no, you can't do that on TV. I said, I don't want to do it then. I don't want to do it. So I said no at first. I, honestly, I said no. I said no, I don't want to do it. The reason why, to be honest, I was scared. That's the truth, I was scared. I didn't want to go on that show, get booed or it flop, become a meme. That's what I was thinking in my head. I thought, no. <laughs> then after a while, I thought, what's the worst that can happen? You know, what's the worst? Let me just go for it. And thank God I did. But I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my mum. I didn't tell my missus. I actually lied to my missus. Yeah, I did. I said to her, I'm just going out for the day to meet my mate Tarquin, yeah? I don't have a mate called Tarkin. Yeah? <laughs> no one's got a mate called Tarkin. But that day, I had a mate called Tarkin. I went out. This was January the 15th last year. Yeah? So whenever this goes out, this was January the 15th, 2022. I remember that day. That was my audition day. And it was scary. It was London Palladium. I walked out, over 2,000 people. And the second I walked out, I thought, shit. <laughs> I did, I'm not gonna, I'm serious. I walked out and I thought, shit, for two reasons, yeah? First reason is that when I walked out, the whole audience had on face masks. You couldn't see it in the TV edit. I don't know who, if anyone was there at the auditions, but the audience had on face masks, apart from the front two rows, yeah? So when I walked out, I thought, damn, because as a comedian, my direct link to the audience is seeing you laugh. You remember that, I, I need to see you like, ha, <laughs> It lets me know I'm doing my job. I didn't see that. I saw the whole audience like. <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing, having a seizure. I don't know. But no, what idea was going on underneath that mask? Got no idea. Very scary. And then I thought to myself, what can I do? The second thing that threw me off is that there was four judges at the front, and I knew there was four judges. But it's just when I saw them, because I've got to make them laugh, you know. As much as the audience laughs, that's all right. But if they say no, it's a no. And the four judges was Amanda Holden. You know Amanda Holden? 
Heart FM, I thought I could make her laugh, you know? Bit of banter, cool. At the time, there was David Williams. I thought I could make him laugh. Comedian, Little Britain, computers is now. I thought, cool. <laughs> Had Alicia Dixon. I thought I could make her laugh, plus. <laughs> we tick the same box on the ethnicity form, yeah? Then you had the last judge, judge that everyone knows, Simon Cap. Now he's ruthless, he says that how it is. He'll lean over with his bobble head and be like, that was the worst performance I've ever seen in my life. Always gives you the thumbs up. And that is what I was scared of, that moment there. That's what I was scared of. Me go back to my friends, and my friends watch that and be like, actually, was that you? On Britain's Got Talent? That got booed off like a dickhead, was that you? That wasn't me. That was Stormzy. <laughs> Let's put on weight, boy. Jeez. <laughs> Scary time. Everyone was talking about this thing backstage called Golden Buzzer as well. That's all everyone was talking about, Golden Buzzer. Now, at the time, I didn't know what a Golden Buzzer was. Now, Golden Buzzer, if you don't know, is when the um, judges press this button on the table when the contestant stands out exceptionally or moves the judges emotionally. And you could only press it once. And you vouch for that. It's like putting 20 pounds on horse four. It's like, see that one there? <laughs> vouch for that. That's, that's for that. Yeah? And everyone's talking about this backstage. That's all they're talking about. And they're breaking it down historically as well. They know everything. Why, what? They're like, Amanda Holden only presses it on days that end in a why. Yeah? <laughs> David Williams, only on the new moon, yeah? <laughs> Simon Cow always off the lunch. They're breaking it down. I'm not there for that. I just want four yeses and a Kit Kat. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. So that was my day, January 15th. I was on the side chatting to Anton Deck, left the stage. Then they talked to you about 30 seconds. Then you walk out as a big star on stage. Then you talk to the judges for another 30 seconds. And I had four and a half minutes. That's all I had. I tried to ask for five minutes. They said, no. I said, all right, cool. And I went, I was doing my jokes, see the audience laughing. Like, hmm. <laughs> I hope they're laughing, I don't know what they was doing. <laughs> see the judges laughing. I saw Simon Cow's pearly white, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> And not only did I get four yeses, but I became Simon Cow's golden buzzer. Oh <laughs> my, I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. When it happened, it was crazy, the feeling. Because backstage is a whole new world, you know. Backstage, everyone's like, Simon Cow's picked his golden buzzer already. Who's he picked the golden buzzer for? Is that the one he picked the golden buzzer for? Oh my God, why is it? I felt like Simon Cow's girlfriend. I was like, <laughs> I started twerking. I was like, yeah. I felt like a baddie, yeah. <laughs> Almost messed up, called my missus. I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. She goes, you did what? <laughs> I met Tarquin, love you, bye. I forgot, didn't I? <laughs> you know the hardest thing about knowing that information, yeah? So think of this. January the 15th, I've just left the venue, realizing, right, I'm Simon Cowell's Gordon Buzzer. Now I've left there, but I can't say anything to anyone, because if it leaks and hits the newspapers, they can cancel me, take me off the show for leaking information, yeah? So I, and it airs on April the 17th, so that's four months. <laughs> Anyone that lives in the area, I'm walking around past you guys, knowing this information, thinking, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> My missus thought I was a weirdo. I was like, are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right? <laughs> My missus got a big mouth, so she's the one person I couldn't tell you now. You know how hard it is? I was just bubbling in my stomach, just came out the other way. It's just... <laughs> Semi-finals came around. That was a very hard time. It was a weird time, interesting time, because you've got five golden buzzers, by the way. The four judges plus Anton Deck can pick a buzzer as well, pick someone as well. So when they pick someone, that's the people that kind of get a lot of attention. So you're on Lorraine, you're on Good Morning, This Morning, you're in the Metro, The Sun. 
You know, because it's a lot of attention with the golden buzzer. And to make it worse, it's like Simon Cowell's golden buzzer. It was a lot of attention. Plus, the journalists, when they write about you, they dig deep, yeah? <laughs> they dig deep. When I was younger, I was a little shit. <laughs> I don't think you re I was a little shit. I was, I went to youth offenders prison when I was younger, yeah? I wanted to put that in the newspaper. Oh my goodness. That's part of the reason why I didn't want to go on Britain's Got Talent. Because when I was, you know, last time I was in front of a judge. <laughs> it didn't go down too well, you know? So. I had good music in my ears, you know, I was listening to Beyonce like, you won't break my song. <laughs> they can't keep a good man down. It's positive music. If you're wondering, what happened? What, what, tell me why, what happened? I know you're, you know, I see Bill and Nathan, Nathan looking at me like, what happened? What happened? I used to fight, I was always fighting. Turns out when you're good at fighting and the other person's not. <laughs> sit in the naughty corner for a bit, don't you? I didn't know that. To learn the hard way. But the way the journalist was writing about me, you would have thought I was bloody Jeffrey Dahmer or something, was it? <laughs> so the semi-finals went, then the finals came. Oh my goodness. Finals was June the 5th. I never forget that day. My birthday's June the 2nd. I said, fuck my birthday, yeah? <laughs> my birthday's June the 5th now, yeah? I don't want no happy birthdays, no, no presents, no, just vote. That's all I wanted, just vote. That's all I cared about. I had never felt pressure like that before in my life. There's 10 of us standing on stage. Over 20,000 people have applied, you know, and 10 of us are on stage. Three golden buzzers got knocked out in the semi-finals, so there's two golden buzzers left, me and Flintson and Taylor. I don't know if you remember them. So I'm standing on stage, and the others, I'm looking at them. I'm like, wow, this is it. We're gonna find out within an hour who it is. And I said to myself, anyhow I get to the last three, I'm doing a naked helicopter dance. <laughs> I'm doing it live on TV, I don't care. I'm doing it. Then I got to the last three. I thought, okay, think about this, not yet. Just calm down, get excited, woosa, woosa. The other two contestants I was with, don't know if you remember, was Tom Ball. Tom Ball was an opera singer and a school teacher. Great guy, we're still good friends to this day. Then you had Jamie Lee Hay, the 13 year old self taught ventriloquist and a school student who was in LA together. Great kid. Then you had me. <laughs> Prison. It just didn't look. <laughs> when you looked at the thing, it just, I thought, I'll stick with third, get my Kit Kat, I'm good. <laughs> then Tumble got knocked out. So it's just me and a 13 year old kid. <laughs> it's not happening. I'll stick with second, I'm good. Congratulations. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah? And then Anton Deck standing between us, and they're like, the winner of Britain's Got Talent is. And then pause for 10 seconds. As you can imagine, 10 seconds feels like two hours. But I was ready, I had my hand on my buckle ready. I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I swear to you, I'm gonna do it. Jamie, back up, you don't wanna see this as well. Back up, you don't wanna see this, not watershed, you don't wanna see it. When I start swinging, it's gonna feel like air con, I swear to you. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I was ready, what? <laughs> I saw, I saw it. It's an actual leg, I was I'm lying, I dropped to my knees and I slightly peed myself. Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to be out, man. It's nice to be out. The pandemic, I guess it's still going, I'm not sure. I live in Florida, so it's really hard to know when it stopped. It stopped for me about a year and a half ago, so. I appreciate you guys trying to hold it out, but you know, we can't help you. It's one of those things. Florida's like an anchor on your foot. We're going down, ladies and gentlemen. You know what my favorite part of the pandemic was? The very beginning of the pandemic. Remember the beginning of the pandemic, like when America cared about black people for three weeks? <laughs> it, was, it was a magical time, remember that? Oh, it was fantastic. Protest everywhere, everybody. Black Lives Matter, oh. Woo! It's that people were calling my phone, apologizing to me. I swear. <laughs> Random people, hey, Courtney, I just want to apologize. How did you get this number? Hey, well, I'll, I'll explain it later. There's three other black friends I got to apologize to, man, so I'll explain it later. 
It's weird. The very beginning of the pro everybody had a statement. You had to have a statement it, to live in this country. It, it, ben and Jerry's ice cream released a statement for black. They sell ice cream, dog. Really? I like black people. I ain't releasing no statement. You understand? It's weird. Netflix. Netflix had a Black Lives Matter section on Netflix. That's why black people are getting shot, because not enough people have seen Pootie Tang. You know what I mean? It's a weird approach is going out. I was watching the pro. I went down to the protest. I saw it up in close and per. You know what I found out at the protest? Uh, white people have an incredible ability to take pepper spray to the face. <laughs> Y'all are some real superheroes, man. That was incredible. I mean, we spent all our time watching the white people protest. Like, how are they doing this, man? They're just walking, no mask on or anything. They're just walking through the smoke like Avenger characters. This is incredible. <laughs> Why don't we let them do the heavy lifting and we'll just start stealing? We don't think about that much. I just started looting. Incredible. I saw a white guy do a backflip at the protest. It's like, hey man, what part of the struggle is that? He walked Black Lives Matter, bro. He walked up to Black Lives Matter. He hit me, Black Lives, with two finger guns. Dude hit me. I was like, hey, you almost hypothetically killed me, dog. It's the most offended I've been all day. Just walk through that. That beginning was weird. Because no one knew what was going on. You know, so at the beginning, you any advice I saw on I just followed Facebook's advice. Say, so, hey, if you get a package from Amazon, leave your package outside for 24 hours, okay? Because Bezos was dropping off the virus at the beginning of the pandemic, right? Leave the you gotta let the COVID blow off all your pack. Make sure you're washing your groceries. You know who else to wash? Like I'm a farmer. I'm washing groceries in the kitchen, soaping down Lucky Charms. It's painful. My daughter's crying. Hey, I'm saving your life right now. You understand? This leprechaun's trying to kill us, all right? So I'm gonna finish with this. Make sure you pack some gloves, Courtney. You need some gloves. Oh, gloves? I'm walking around with gloves like I'm OJ. I got gloves in my back pocket. You pump gas, you're gonna need to put your gloves on. <laughs> I'm putting on latex gloves, pumping gas. You don't wanna get COVID on your steering wheel, all right? Because you get COVID on the steering wheel, you rub your nose. Now you got a full blown COVID situation, all right? So you gotta put your hands in some sanitizer, put your nose, it's just, you don't want all that pressure. So I got gloves and I'm ready to go, I'm soaping. I'm figuring everything out. Then, you know, the, 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 the vaccine hit the streets. That, that was a good day for me. Because that's when I just gave up on everything. Just, Let me get that, you know. Of course, all my friends all of a sudden are epidemiologists. You know? <laughs> Give me vaccine advice. Hey, Courtney, you don't know what's in that vaccine. I was, You're right. That's why I took three of them. I took, I took every vaccine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> If you keep showing up to CVS, they just keep poking you. That's the way it works. <laughs> I started changing names. It's a real catch me if you can situation when I show up. So let me get some of that, dude. Give me some of Build up your immune system, Courtney. That's the key to the vibe. Build up. I'm 37. We are done building here. You understand? <laughs> this building is finished. <laughs> This is not a building. This is a 06 Hyundai you're looking at right now. I'm just trying to make the outside look good, you know? I'm replacing everything. I'm not building anything, it's a weird thing. No, just, just give me the facts. I don't have time. I don't have the type of health insurance where I can turn down free vaccinations. I don't know about y'all. I have health insurance, it's smoke and mirrors. My deductible's like $5,000, you understand? I gotta catch some biblical. It's the worst thing, I gotta come down with leprosy. It's the only way I go see the doctor, okay? I go to a walk-in clinic as my primary care physician. If you go to a walk-in, you're not getting healthy in a walk-in clinic. Their job is to keep you from dying in the lobby. That's the reason that I, they don't want to do paperwork, all right? It's like being taken care of by a stepdad, you know what I mean? You walk in the clinic. So I took all the vaccines. Let me tell you, any gimmick I found, on, I was doing all the advice I found. I was vegan. Oh yeah, I became vegan during the pandemic. It was like maybe, you know, COVID's in dairy or something like that. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> Saw a documentary on uh, Netflix about being vegan. Right after I watched Pootie Tang, I was like, let me check out. <laughs> What else is hurting black people on Netflix? 
I found out on Netflix that uh, 50% of black people are lactose intolerant. I found that out on uh, Netflix. I've been black my whole life. I had no clue. Netflix, <laughs> they broke the news. Half the black people I know are dying right now. They have no clue. I called my grandmother. I had to break the news. I was like, hey, Granny, I hope you're sitting down. You're not going to believe what I just found out on Netflix. 50% of black people are lactose. Oh, they didn't tell me either, man. Put that Klondike bar down. That is, that's tearing the community apart. I found out on the same documentary, by the way, uh, that white people are allergic to gluten. <laughs> y'all been keeping that a secret, you know what I mean? That gluten allergy is taking y'all out one by one. <laughs> pools of dead white people everywhere from gluten. Black people get shot by the police. White people, bread. So where, <laughs> where thing y'all got going on? Between gluten and vaping, your community is in shambles. <laughs> Found that out on Facebook. Boy, that vaping is ravaging the kids. <laughs> Anything on Facebook. I liked it. That was it. I loved it going on the Facebook because that's when you find out how angry people are because you couldn't leave the house. So you just had to get on the keyboard and get your muscles. Hey, I'm tired of all this. I'm leaving Facebook. That's fake. When people quit Facebook on Facebook, it's fan. I'm leaving. This is my last post, guys. It's like I cared about the other 200 posts that were terrible. Just get out of here. That is one less birthday. I got to act like I remember, dude. <laughs> I don't really care if you leave, dude. I'm, I'm tired of the fighting. I'm only on Facebook for the fights. That's my favorite part. <laughs> I like seeing my fans, friends angry. I do. I get persuaded, though, when I see that. It's because I have Facebook, Reddit. I've been in all those rooms. I wasn't even sure I was going to do comedy anymore. That's how much fun I was having. Because like, you know what I found out on Facebook? I think uh, I want to be a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> These people have a fantastic time online, dude. Everything's going great for them. I want to be a conspiracy. The problem is, I, I don't have any theories. This is the issue. I just got conspiracies, you know what I mean? It's like I'm suspicious, but I have no motivation to find out why. It's the space I live in. Anything that makes me feel weird, I just, you know, I assume it's a bad thing. Like, I don't trust people with prepaid phones. You understand? Like, if you don't have a, a, a prepaid, I don't trust, you can't be friends with me with a prepaid phone, you know? I, I gotta be able to trust you when I turn my back. I can't do it, you got a Boost Mobile, some Metro wireless flip phone, you walk around like Inspector Gadget. What do you have a flip phone for? Walking around with a burner, what are you, auditioning for the wire? What are you doing with that phone? I'm not saying you commit crime if you have a prepaid phone, but everybody commits crime has a prepaid phone, right? So, I'm not gonna interview you individually, I just condemn you all. I don't have time. I think Morgan Freeman uh, is part of the Illuminati. That's right. There's no backstory of Morgan Freeman. You know? Morgan Freeman just appeared one day. You have no clue what Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman has been an old man my entire life. My entire life. You ever seen a baby picture of Morgan Freeman? You know? What does young Morgan Freeman look like? You know, I Googled baby Morgan Freeman. Like a picture of him from Shawshank Redemption came up. You know what? It's a 75 year old baby walking around. I'm the only one concerned, apparently. That is it. I called the police on Morgan Freeman. I did. I did. I was like, I got an emergency. I, like, I paused Bruce Almighty. I got to get to the bottom of this. I got an emergency. What's the emergency, sir? Well, so I'm looking for a baby picture of Morgan Freeman. That's the emergency. It's like, oh, we are too. What? How's this dude keep slipping through our hands? I just want to meet him now. I always have this, this idea of meeting Morgan. It's the only reason I still do comedy. Is hopefully I can get famous enough to just get in a room with him and ask him some tough questions. Thank you for showing up to the meeting, Morgan. I got a question for you. Where do you get the cream for your face, man? You have the smoothest old black man skin I've ever seen in my life, dog. The freckles kind of throw me off. I don't know why they put those on the costumes. This <laughs> nigga move. And then he's going to do it. Morgan Freeman's gonna do it. He's gonna pull me to the back. He's like, hey, Courtney, watch this. He's gonna unzip his face to reveal Benjamin Button. 
I'm gonna catch him. <laughs> Brad Pitt is behind that mask, dude. I'm convinced. It's everything during the pandemic. Spent so much time between being on, online and at home, that was like my whole life. I became a, a, a father uh, during, during the pandemic, which was weird. It's weird becoming a father uh, for me during the pandemic because my daughter is uh, four. You know? <laughs> I always thought I was a father, but I was never home. I was always working doing comedy. So people just took my word for it. You know what I mean? It's great. After, oh, you have a daughter? I do have a daughter. Oh, you must be, I am a great, I got a picture. Oh, do you want to see? Because if you got a picture of a bet, everybody just assumes you're good at it, right? So I, I'll show you a picture. I got to download it from the cloud. I don't, it takes up memory on the phone. You know what I mean? So I download this grainy picture of my, that's my daughter right there. If you got a picture of a baby, people assume you're good at it. That's, it ain't even got to be your baby, by the way. You just throw that out there. I got an Asian baby on my phone. You know what I mean? I pull it out. And I dare somebody to ask me questions about it. You don't think I can make an Asian baby? Really? Are you trying to get canceled right now? Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> Figure it out that it's my baby right there, man. Respect me. Came a father. We, so we did all this family stuff. That's when uh, things got real, being at home a lot. That's, I remember uh, the day my life changed, my wife looked at me. She said, hey, Courtney, um, do you want to go on a power walk? What, a power walk? What, 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 you, I didn't know we could power walk, can we do that? I, just, I thought that was something old people did to keep their hips in shape. <laughs> Why are we power walk? Is that what y'all do when I'm out of town? It's like, I don't have power walking equipment, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a walking stick. I don't own Skechers. I mean, it's like power walking. You see a black dude wearing Skechers, that dude is giving up on life, you understand? <laughs> it is over for him. He don't want to tie his shoes no more. He, he ain't trying to run for the police. He is done. <laughs> only black dude wearing Skechers is Danny Glover. I'm convinced. He's the only one. So now I'm power walking with my family. We're bonding. Social distancing on our power walk. Now, I, uh, I live in a mixed income neighborhood in, in Florida. So, you know, the one reason I like living in a mixed income neighborhood, a couple reasons. Number one, I like living around an element of danger. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something that makes your hair stand up and lets you know you're alive, you know? You hear a sound, oh, is that fireworks or gunshots? Ah, you know, let's check the mail. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the space I live in. Another reason, I like living in a mixed income neighborhood because it's very diverse. It's socially, politically, racially, super diverse neighborhood. I like that. So you have houses in my uh, neighborhood. Some houses have a lot of kids. Some houses have no kids. And I noticed something on my power walks. People that have a lot of kids always like to let you know they have a lot of kids, right? <laughs> oh, one of the only benefits of having a lot of kids is free labor, and you get to tell other people you got them. That's it. They put signs in the grass. My kid graduated kindergarten. Oh, really? Congratulations on turning six, buddy. Apparently, that's an accomplishment in your house. You got some therapy in your future, by the way. Your parents have <laughs> self-esteem issues. Where? Kids that play drive slow. So, oh, really? I got to drive slow for the... I don't usually drive based on how old people are. I don't know how y'all roll. I've never had to look for a kid. Oh, I need to know how fast I can drive. It was a whole, is that a baby right there? It's like, yeah, I got tricked. It was a Mexican baby. He had a his mustache coming in. I didn't know how old the baby was. I was driving too fast. They pulled me over. Hold that baby up for me. There's one sign in my neighborhood that says, drive like your kids live here. Says, well, my kid knows how to dodge a car. So, I'm gonna need a better reason to slow down. You should have a sign that says, drive like the police is behind you. You know what I mean? Everybody drives slow, that's the point. But it's these rich white families that don't know other any other black people. They want to adopt, or Asian people, they want to adopt a black or Asian child, man. It's weird. And, like, they're kind of like rappers in a sense. Like, they flex the black children they adopt. Like, rappers <laughs> flex their chains. Because <laughs> how weird is it that you don't have no black people in your life, and you turn to your partner and say, hey, we don't have any black friends. You want to buy one? What? <laughs> you know who don't got this shit together, though? People who smoke. I don't think so, yo. They always asking somebody for a lighter. 
And I'd be confused, like, nigga, don't you do this every single day? <laughs> you knew the steps way before you was going to get here. How you managed to come unprepared? <laughs> like, if I wasn't here, how was you going to find fire? <laughs> how? Why are you using me? How was you gonna find me? Right, that's my question. How, I, what you gonna do if I'm not here? I don't know. All right then. And they look at you, they just like, it's like they scan the room just to see who look like they got a line. Ah, you, yo. They never say anything. It's like their mute button is on it. You got it. You got it. They never say, you got it. Why are you doing that? I don't know if you heard me or not. Even if you don't smoke, you still tap your pockets. Like, you got a light? Hold on, let me see if I got a light. <laughs> you want me to hold on? I could have sworn. You always could have sworn some. Hold on, I could have sworn. No, no, I could have sworn this. I'm butt ass nigga right now. Why am I tapping my. And tell me, how did you get into my apartment? I don't know. I just. Get the fuck out. You don't live here. I, don't know. I live in 3B. 3B? No. Jeff lives in 3B. You don't live there. Crazy. And no one like, like recently like, I had, I had dreadlocks, right? I had dreadlocks, which is a beautiful thing, right? And I, but I just, uh, I just cut them, all right? And it's beautiful, right? It's black, all right? Strong, all right? But it's a responsibility. <laughs> because when you have dreadlocks, for some reason, everybody thinks you know how to roll a blunt. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. It's like my hair doesn't show that I have that skill. Why do you think I'm the master at that? And this is coming to you. Just, oh, you got a lot. Oh, all right, let's go back. Yo, yo, Rollers. Rollers. First of all, we are in urgent care. I cannot roll this for you, Dr. Hennessy. <laughs> Where's my COVID-19 results? Why are you telling me to do this while I wait? Why? Why? Hard. Which... No one talks about how hard it is to roll a blunt. That is very difficult to do. No one talks about that. Look at all the people who know how to roll. <laughs> wow. How dare you not know how to roll a blunt? Shame on you and your family. Dishonor. It's like, what am I, Mulan? It's not that deep, bro. It's really not that deep. It's not that shame on you. I got a trauma. I got to climb up a tree. This is crazy. Where Moose you at when you need him? This is, this is wild. This is, this is crazy. Disney movie vibes. Like during the pandemic, like I had like a lot of time on my hands and I literally took the time out to learn how to roll a blunt. Literally did. I was watching tutorials, right? And uh, in this specific one, like Wiz Khalifa was like the master class instructor. This dude is horrible, yo. He's a horrible teacher. Because he's teaching you how to roll a blunt in a jacuzzi. I'm like, I, I can't focus right now. <laughs> Too much bubbles everywhere. And why is it baby oil in the background? What's, what's happening within this video right now? What's going on? Yeah, Wiz Khalifa used baby oil? That's crazy. He's a grown man. I, I guess so. I mean, if need be, but guess. Right? Yo, he's teaching you how to roll the blunt, right? He's like, all you gotta do is just bubble just popping over the blunt. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is just put the weed in the middle and just tuck it. That's all you're saying. Just tuck the weed and you should be good. Like, all right, Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> right? Following week, right? I just so happened to be on like an edible, right? And it has some weed, like, you know, just like hanging around, right? So I decided, I'm like, all right, cool. Let me, let me, let me try to do what Wiz Khalifa did, right? Did exactly the same thing, but I didn't have a jacuzzi, so I was trying to roll a blunt in my tub. <laughs> Yo. Literally, like, so I'm, I'm trying, right? No bubbles, just straight water. <laughs> straight water. You now you're gonna tell me to take a bath, like, man, this is clear. This is like too clear. Ain't no bubbles or nothing. Right, so I'm trying to roll the blunt, right? Literally, all of the weed was just falling <laughs> down. Everything, just as soon as I put it in, everything was just falling down. Like I looked like a ripped tea bag. It was so much. <laughs> Looking residue everywhere. I don't know if Ajax gonna get this out. This is crazy. 
Then I had Yogi T quotes. I'm like, Yogi T quotes? One of the quotes said, be whole and never give anyone half of your Reese's peanut butter cup. I said, oh my God. Thank you so much, Yogi. Crazy. That's why I feel like, I don't know. That's why I feel like rolling the blunt should be an Olympics, yo. Because it's very competitive. We're very competitive. Every place think, you know, their weed is better than their weed, right? Every people think they can roll better than the next person. All right, and then they say, like, marijuana is like recreation, right? All right, so let it be, be a sport. <laughs> let it be a sport. It's very competitive. That should be dope in the Olympics, right? Yeah, probably, like, an announcer and everything like that, right? Like, as he crushes the weed, a little bit about him, he was a finalist in the neighborhood. <laughs> he was the only one who knew how to roll a blunt in the stairwell <laughs> while his mom was at work. I ain't just be on a field like this. <laughs> wow, amazing to see. I'm just saying. Yeah. By any chance, you happen to have a lighter, it's like, oh, this. Wow. Wow. He been rolling for like five minutes. He ain't checked the check. Wow, that, 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 is, that is crazy to see. I think he gonna get bronze on that one. That is wow. We are, we are just competitive, man. Nothing wrong with like a little co competition. I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like I love, um, like I'm a big sports guy. Like I love basketball, yo. I love like watching like the documentaries, the basketball. Like my favorite documentary is um, Kobe Bryant Muse. That's like one of my favorite documentaries on Showtime, right? And um, I wanted to be a basketball player. I really did, but basketball too competitive, yo, sometimes. It's too competitive, yo. Because like for some reason, like when people find out you know how to play basketball, they automatically think they better than you. <laughs> Automatic think they better than you. Right? They don't they only have to see you play, they just think they better than you. Like word you play basketball, word? Okay, okay, that's what's up. You be on your you be on your bone. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll bust your ass, you don't play basketball. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. This nigga's garbage, yo. This nigga's garbage. I'll bust your ass. I give you 30. They always want to give you 30 points. I give you 30. What? With 10 rebounds and 10 assists. Like, this is one-on-one. -on -one. Where you gonna get the 10 assists from? I'll bust your ass. Like, miss, why are you yelling at me right now? You're on the CVS. Why are you, why are you yelling? There's a self-checkout lane opening now. Why are you yelling at me? Why? What's all this energy? Why? We competitive, man. No matter what it is, too. We just compete. Like, I remember, like, I, I took my girl to, like, a pain sip, right? I don't know if you ever been to a pain sip, right? I took my girl to a pain sip, right? And uh, if you don't know what it is, basically, it's like a class like this, right? Then you have, like, an instructor, like a Bob Ross dude. That's what I call him, right? Right, Bob Ross, dude, and you know, you're painting on a canvas and you're drinking as well. But some people go to the paint and sit, they don't even paint. <laughs> they think it's open bar, all they do is just come and drink. They just, mmm, this tastes good. Like, you're drinking paint right now. Why are you putting your, your paintbrush and everything? Mm, nah, this is a paint berry and vodka. That's not it. Right? So I'm painting, right? I'm, I'm happy about my painting, right? So I paint like a mountain, right? Sun, a little, little water, right? So I'm happy about my painting. So you know, I asked, you know, Bob Ross, dude, instructor. I'm like, yo, you know, what you think about my painting? He's like, that's your painting. I'm like, okay, oh, that's your painting right there. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, okay. He started looking at it. He's like, okay, 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 okay. I'll bust your ass in painting, <laughs> sir. This shit is garbage. <laughs> and your mountain look like a TV stand. This shit. I'd throw it away if I was you. <laughs> Miss, are you with him? Yeah, this shit is trash. Both, matter of fact, both of y'all paintings is trash. This shit is garbage. I give you 30 different colors. I said 30 different colors. I don't even know 30 different colors. Hmm. Right, that's crazy. I know blue and yellow make green. Where are we gonna get the other 27 colors from? 
Different math, different math. <laughs> right? Y'all remember like when you come to school like the crayon box, right? Like a 64 pack? You, uh, you, uh, you all right. But if you come through like a, like a 124 crayon box, <laughs> you a legend. You really a legend right now. And you start feeling yourself. You start asking the teacher if she need anything. Yo, you, you good up there? Not good, is the class good? I'm saying I got colors back here just to make sure. Have no pride, have no pride. I'm just saying me as a chalkboard monitor, I just felt the need to ask if anyone needs anything. I got colors back here, all right, all right, all right. All right. Feel yourself. Oh no, he competitive, man. That's why I love the Bronx. Like, I'm from the Bronx. Right. There we go. Like, like, our thing is, like every, look, somebody shouted out Queens. That's how, that's how you know Queens get no love. Brooklyn, Harlem, no one said anything. Queens just felt, yo, Queens. No one said, everybody had pride. Like, nah, we good, I, I know. No one said anything. Only thing that guys like coming to America, yo, Eddie Murphy came to our block. I'm like, all right. Like 50, I'm like, all right, Queen, all right. Thank you so much for coming, Queens. He was gonna make the album. Queens is gonna make the album. I'm making the album? I gotta, gotta get my credit. Yo, that's me saying Queens on the album. Look at us. That's me. Everybody else. Just... What part of Queens? Real quick, what part of Queens? What part of Queens? All right, all right, all right. All right. Like, you heard the mumbling. So, all right, on front of you. All right. Just mumbling. See, I love let it. Mom, and we don't really fuck the South Side. Well, thank, thank, thank. Well, I, I rock with you. Thank you for coming out, bro. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but I'm from the Bronx, man, and I'm like, every place got their own little thing. Like, our thing is, if you see something, keep it to yourself. <laughs> keep it to yourself. No one knows nothing. No one sees it. Keep it to yourself. Right? What's that? Like, I was in the park, right? and I see this lady burping his baby, right? Like, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, she was burping his baby dumb hard. But it was like one of those babies with like no sense of humor, so he's staring at me. His hat was full enough, but he just kept staring at me. Right, burping the baby so much, the baby throws up on her, sh you know, on her mother's shoulder. I'm like, oof, shit is disgusting. You know, so I wanted to let the mom know, like, miss, I want to let you know that your baby just threw up on your shoulder. But I felt like the baby was looking at me like, <laughs> you about to snitch on me? <laughs> he just fixed his hat. Mind your fucking business before I throw up on you. And by any chance, you happen to have a lighter, because this onesie got no pockets. I said the Lion King onesie, he's got no pockets. I know pockets. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate all the positive energy. I actually needed, uh, I got cheated on this week. Aww. Worst part about it is I got cheated on by my side chick. And um, <laughs> that completely caught me off guard. You know what I'm saying? Like if you can't trust your side chick, who can you trust these days? There should be somebody out there. And I was her side chick. She was in a bad relationship, I was in a bad relationship, and we decided to do this thing, and then she just goes, John, I just think we should see other people. I go, woman, we are the other people, okay? That's what <laughs> this is. So I didn't wanna like just take it, but I'm not like a fighter. I just went through her phone, and I called her boyfriend. I was like, yo, Sandra's cheating on us. <laughs> what do you wanna do? How do you propose we proceed? So he goes, you mean to tell me my fiance of five years who I'm supposed to marry next month is cheating on me? And then it hit me, like, this dude is so selfish. Don't make it all about you, okay? I'm going through, what about me? 
So I'm in a bad relationship and I don't want to be in it. Then I'm getting cheated on by some girl I've never been in a relationship with. Like at some point you just run out of Drake songs. There's just not enough Drake <laughs> out there to get you through your day. Uh, I had some good news happen to me too. I got invited to apply for a black card. Any black card holders in the audience? No, we're all broke? Okay, let me explain. Um, black cards is card made by American Express, made completely out of metal. You can buy whatever you want with it, like cars, yachts, slaves, whatever you need <laughs> to get you through your rich life. But I was slighted because I didn't get like the American Express version. I got the MasterCard. I didn't want a second rate version of the black card. Like I didn't want the light skin, green eye, wavy hair version <laughs> of the black card. Like, I want my black card to be so black that police shoot it on the arm. Like, that's how black <laughs> I want my black card to be. I want my black card to be so black that it's made out of vibranium and it says Wakanda on it. Like, that's how black <laughs> I want my black card to be. I want my black card to be so black that I get 4% cash back on child support. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how black I want my black card to be, you know? So I got goals to get there. Um, I'm trying to save money. What you're looking at is about like $80 of excellence, and I'm gonna let you know I got it at Ross. Um, and if you don't know, let me put you on the game. Ross is a store for broke people with FU money. Like whenever you got like $75 American, take it to Ross, it turns into $120 clearance really fast. <laughs> the only problem is I don't like the way they treat you. As soon as you get in the score, you're greeted by loss prevention. Your face is on a security camera. Like, Ross is if jail had a gift shop, you know? Just calm <laughs> down. And what are you guarding? The shirts are on the floor with fingerprints. <laughs> the shoes are never matched up together. What I'm trying to say is Ross is the only store to sell evidence. Like, <laughs> this is not just my outfit. This is somebody's cold case right here, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's too intense, too intense. I am dating. Uh, I'm trying online dating, but it's not working for me because I look like this, but I sound like this. So like when people meet me in person, they're like, uh, you don't look like the commercial. You know, like it's not what I thought I was getting. But I play to my strengths. Like I know what I am. I'm like the marijuana black dude. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're dating a Chad, don't go straight to a Trayvon. Get you a John Taylor to make that transition. <laughs> Let me show you the way of hot sauce. Like, I will, I will get you prerequisites, you know? It's, it's, let me guide you. The reason, like, and, and I'm still scarred from my last relationship. Like, I just got out of an eight-year relationship, and I'm fresh out. Like, it's only been about four years. And um, <laughs> what's, what's happening is she won't let me move on. She keeps posting from our joint Yelp account that we had when we were together. So every time she goes out with a new boo, I get the notification about how awesome the date was. Like her last review, was like, it was cool to go to Benihana and not have to use a $30 gift certificate, John Taylor. I was like, okay, that's, that's a little personal. And then she's like, the drinks were kind of weak, the food portions, they were small, but the sex, five stars. <laughs> Worst part about that review is like eight people found it useful. So now I'm just that guy <laughs> with bad sex and gift certificates. And I'm so much more than that. I turned 36 this year. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, as a black man, that's an achievement, you know what I'm saying? Um, and before, before the pandemic hit, like, I celebrated my birthday at the Queen Mary. I don't know if you guys have been. It's the hotel in Long Beach, like, it's permanently docked. The ship that goes nowhere. Um, and I'm eating brunch on this thing, and I realized as a black man, I've made it, okay? On a, as a black man, let me explain. My ancestors came over here on a slave ship. I'm now on a ship that's built for royalty eating waffles made to order omelets, apple to cup bacon, right? Just living it up. So I think every black person should experience this brunch. And if I'm being honest, a white person should have to pay for it because <laughs> white people, you owe us a good time on a ship, okay? That needs to be <laughs> cast in. And it can't be like a dolphin cruise. It can't be whale watching. <laughs> it has to be the Queen Mary for these two reasons. One. It has to be a ship that's built for royalty, okay? That's, that's number one. And two, and this is the important part, that ship can't go nowhere. <laughs> where I get on is where I get off. Just not gonna fall <laughs> for the dumb again, okay? If I could get into a time machine and I could go back and talk to my dumb self, my dumb self would not believe what is happening in the future. Hey, Greg. 
Ja? It's me. Who's me? You. I'm you in the future. Oh. What's gonna happen in the future? In the future, everyone will have a phone. Well, everybody already does have a phone. Like, what, what's, what's the big deal? No. Everyone will have a phone. Well, are, are they cheap or something? They're a thousand dollars. Nobody's gonna pay a thousand dollars for a phone. They're gonna line up for it. People ask me all the time, what's the hardest thing about being a parent? Other parents. You gotta spend time with people you normally wouldn't spend time with. Because your kids are friends with their kids, you gotta hang out with them and make sure that they're not all psychopaths. And let me tell you, Minneapolis, they're all psychopaths. <laughs> There's nothing worse than my son's like, Dad, I got a new friend. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Why are you meeting new people? This is racism in Canada. I've been living here for five years. I was here and then the Black Panther came out. We saw the movie. After the movie, the lights come on, and we're all walking out, and white people would see me. <laughs> it's not bad, but this is what they, they, they would see me, and they go. <laughs> like that, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I'm like, what? That was weird. Why are you doing that? You know what I mean? My dick is out, I'm taking a piss. They're like, Wakanda forever. <laughs> I'm from Fresno. Why did you say that? <laughs>